night. We rise. We reign. We spread. For evil speak, but lie in store. Your fate is sealed. The cards have set. Welcome, goblins. Welcome, ghouls. Welcome, spirits. Wizards, fools, let's call the smile into the head. Welcome all to the night of dread. <laughs> Tonight is the game. I am Matthew Lillard. I'll be your dungeon master. How exciting is that? I um, I have never DM'd a stream before, and here we all are together right now. Um, first, before we start, uh, I'm going to say uh, a couple words. Um, Dungeons and Dragons Lost Odyssey Night of Dread is supporting Extra Life, which is an amazing organization. Um, 70 million kit, uh, 70 million dollars have been raised for sick kids all over the United States by gamers. Um, all donations go to support local children's miracle network hospitals. Um, this event, if you go to lost odyssey events.com and donate, you actually receive something tonight for the next 24 hours after this premieres, you get 30% off a custom mini and you'll get a free wolf or a flail of the founders mini with hundred percent of the profits going to extra life which is incredible. And the, the work that Extra Life does is remarkable. And so we're happy to be supporting that charity tonight. We also have sponsors to thank as we start. Core is a new PC gaming platform with hundreds of games. You can play it on, um, you go to coregames.com to learn more. They're free to open, open to everyone out there who uh, loves to play games, which we all do. Night of Dread is also supported by Neverwinter. Um, it's free to play. It's a massive multiplayer online game based in the DD universe. You can go to Forgotten Realms and all the places you love. Uh, Neverwinter is available on Arc and Stream and PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, Sirenscape, which we actually all have playing right now in our ears. There it is. Uh, ben is actually DJing right now from Australia. He's watching a live feed and DJing right now. So, um, Sirenscape, if you haven't played with it before, especially in the gaming world that we're in right now where we're playing online, I feel like it's one of those things that you can add to your game and it immediately enhances your experience for your players and for you. It's great to be a part of this game. It's great to be here with you all. And it's, um, it's an honor to share the table. So with that, uh, I will begin. Um, I want to start out, I did just say this, but I want to say it again for anyone at home. Um, I'm a new DM and in my life, yes, I, I'm an actor. Um, and I'm used to being in front of people, but I find myself very nervous. And I just want to say that it's scary to DM at times. And I just thought I'm 50 years old. I just started DMing this year. And I, I want you to know that I'm using my, my adrenaline and my fear to play the game anyways. I just don't think that we should be intimidated by DMs, or by, by taking the seat of the DM, by being the storyteller, by working with your friends to tell a story. So I just want to leave it all out there that you guys, and you should know, I'm not great at rules. <laughs> I like telling the story and I like being in the game and I like having fun, but I suck at rules. So anytime in tonight's game, if you find you're in conflict with the rules and you know it better than me, I want you to know, you have to tell me. <laughs> and then, like, yeah, exactly. Hey! Objection! <laughs> I'm about what are your feelings on random songs? Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm about to make up a lot of rules. For and 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 you will win. Tonight. You will win the game, Kate. You will be the best. Um, so yeah, so that's um, I wanted to say that. And then the other thing I want people to know is that a lot of time when when we play these one shots, the thing that's missing is any kind of backstory any kind of connective tissue. To me, the great thing about the game is that when we are fully invested in our characters, we play them for years and years and years, you fall in love with them. And the last thing you want to see happen is to lose one of them. And so I think then sometimes in one shots that sort of gets away because you're rolling dice and you don't really know the character you're playing. I mean, obviously Joy you do and Kiki you do, but um, Karina, you play too, you play. Okay, well, a lot of you know. <laughs> I don't want to kill your character. But so tonight what I wanted to do 
is I took the liberty of writing a quick backstory that all of us, I mean, literally none of us have had any conversations about this game. So as we're sitting down today, I, I only know you by what you're wearing on the screen. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to actually read a quick backstory. And as we go through, I'd just like to invite you to yes. And any sort of opportunity you have in the story that I offer, and then I'll jump us into the land of Barovia. Okay. Um, good. Right, here we go. All of your fathers, Kiki, this is not applied to you, this applies to the four women. All of your fathers were in the wars. They went together and they were lucky enough to come home as one. And home they stayed for a long time. They'd grown fat around the middle and bored for sure. And they had made their mark in the world and they had served the armies and they had returned with gold and small trinkets of magic and wisdom of all things death and survival. But time was passing and children were had and their wives were happy with them home until one night at the Stardew Festival as the traveling players from just outside of Wormwood were gathered on the stage. Joy, that night you were a young girl. Do you remember what those players were doing on that stage that night? I always like to come out here because sometimes my dad sings songs and I like to see him do them. And it's really exciting for me to watch him perform, but tonight was different. It just felt really exciting to just see him in his element, you know? And, and as, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, that's all. Okay, good. So as they played on the stage that night, and you all remembered, up came roaring a young man on a giant steed, almost pulling the horse onto the stage itself. He wore gold and, and green clothing. He had jewelry like some people would wear armor. He was beautiful and his chest was open and bare. And on the steed, he pulled back and reared back and the entire town, the entire village that was there to watch the minstrels looked up and stopped in awe. And he looked at your father, Joy, and he said, Sarah, it is you I am looking for indeed. Your name is Jasper Larissa, is it not? My master. He sent for you. And he looked around the entire room or the entire center of the town. And he looked at your father for growth and your father, Sister Rose. And Karina, your father, he said, you and you, and you, Druid. I look for you as well, for your names. They're acts of heroism that precede you. You are legends from where I am from. And by the fates, I have found you. For many moons, I have been searching, and yet here you are, underneath the night sky, listening to beautiful music as it should be. And he produces a letter, and he hands it to your father, Joy. And he says, you, if you can read as, it's, as they say you can, in here, you will find what lays before you, what danger lays before you. You will find what goodness, goodness has been laid to waste. This letter is an invitation to be heroes again. And he says to you, Karina's, he says to Karina's father, he says to you and you and you and you, I have been looking for all of you. Many moons have I traveled and here I find you under the night sky. How lucky for me. And from his jerk and he pulls a letter and he hands it to your father joy and he says you Jasper De La Rosa you as rumor has it you can read can you not in this letter it tells the tale of the wickedness that lies beyond the fogs in this letter it will tell you of the goodness that has been laid to wreck in this letter stands before you heroic acts I know not if you are worthy of them but take this and if you are the heroes they say you are I shall meet you right here at the crack of dawn. For it is never good to travel in the slavish woods at night. I hope you are indeed the heroes that we need. And with that, he rears his horse up 
and travels back off into the night. All of you gather in the Larissa house that night. In this sleeping loft, as young girls, you listen as long as you could, as long as you could stay awake. You listen to the, the men downstairs mumbling while your mothers were outside smoking their pipes. They met in the wars. Your wives, the, your, your mothers were equal to your fathers as warriors. Some would say better. Some would say more ruthless. Definitely more cunning. And as the men mumbled about what they should do, they filled their bellies with mead and you drifted off into sleep. And in the morning you woke up with your mother, Sister Rose, raiding the winter rations to give to your father. Karina, your mother was sharpening your father's blade. Regrowth, you remember what your father was doing that morning before he left? He was he was crushing herbs to make a poultice, but it wasn't the kind of poultice that he would make on a regular day-to-day -day basis. He was clearly something for emergencies. Uh, so it was a recipe that I didn't recognize and he wouldn't, he wouldn't respond to me when I asked him what he was doing. Indeed. And with that, your mothers raised their hands as they traveled off right before the sun rose. Days turned to weeks, weeks turned to seasons, and seasons turned to never to return again. And the four of you were raised almost as feral girls. I mean, you were like <laughs> madness. The, the mothers had to band together to raise you together because like, nobody could deal with you. Sister Rose, why? Why were you, what, what was the obnoxious things that you would do about town? I was rather fond of fighting, probably a little bit too much so. Right, and who would you fight? The bully down the street. Yes. Yes. Things came to a head when I threw him off the roof when he was climbing to put up decorations. Yes, remember <laughs> that's the time that you had to make a pulpus just for that. They made me. I was happy with his arm broken in three places. <laughs> Indeed. And Karina, do you remember the time you gathered the boys? Each one of you, each four of you, gathered a gaggle of boys from different towns. <laughs> You decided to bring them together in the lavender fields to fight for your honor. And then when the battle broke out, all these clumps of boys, what happened? Do you remember? It, it, it was funny because they all wanted to go after Sister Rose. And I just laughed because we all knew Sister Rose was just going to demolish each <laughs> and every one of them. And, but <laughs> the best part, the best part is when Joy got involved. Oh, let me tell you, Joy. Why don't Why don't you tell him what you did, Joy? Hmm. Hmm. A lot of people think that if you're really quiet, that you don't really care about what happens around you. But sometimes you have to punch people in the face so that they understand that they can't mess with you at all. And I do that a lot. <laughs> and Four I did men. that a lot. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Yeah, you, you did that a lot. And four the four of you brought together four collections of young men and they fought as gangs. And as the battle broke out, the four of you fought back to back and kicked their ass, all of them. And that led to your first adventures. Sister Rose, what was the first adventure you went on as a foursome? I think our first adventure was to ascertain who had hijacked the ale shipment that was supposed to make its way to our village. And you were young. And, and, and what happened at the end of that adventure? Do you remember? I do. Uh, we were sitting on our ill-gotten goods uh, and we began drinking it, although we were <laughs> not supposed to. We were definitely not of age. Um, and when the barrels came back half empty to town, uh, we said that the bandits drank it. That's hilarious. I seem to recall uh, summoning a watery spear to uh, fill in the rest of the barrels to make sure that they were at least the right weight, and that that did not pass. That did not pass muster at all. Watered down did not work. That's right. Did not work. We and were you... also very hungover. I think that uh, <laughs> did not help either. Well, you made I thought, Sorry, I, go ahead. I had always been told that good berries cure hangovers, so I thought we were set. I had summoned all those good berries. Lesson learned. <laughs> And that, um, 
That led to nicknames. You got nicknames. <laughs> what was your favorite one, Karina? That the towns nearby gave you. What was your favorite well, nickname? Well, because my fur, of course, is so flowy and silver. They they called me Lady Fluffikins because they they thought that I was too proper. But we don't we don't like to use that name too much. Yeah, yeah, Karina. That's that's what we stick to, Karina. But every now and again, someone just makes me mad. <laughs> Lady Fluffikins yeah. pops up, and it's just it just uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure. And you guys, you started to operate sort of like a gang. I mean, they they would you would walk into a town and they would show you the respect that you deserve. For you had grown into, your mothers had trained you to be incredible warriors. And you earned the right to walk into any town and demand the respect that comes to adventurers. And then yep. one day, years later, in the morning, a man in a barreled wagon with flowing garb on, green and gold, with jewelry like some people would wear armor, a scabbard at his side, pulled into town. And as he did, he hops off and says, I'm looking for adventurers. Kiki, you remember the story of the men taking off into the, into the wild and not ever returning. These four girls, these four young girls, it broke your heart because as you always say, it takes a village. Yes. Right? Absolutely. And as you would travel the Sword Coast, you would stop by the village almost every time. And the first time you stopped by, you introduced yourself. And what was the first thing you you taught them? I mean, you, you went on to become a, a role model of them. Well, but the first time you pulled up, what did you teach them? Well, when I was a, a young uh, postal carrier, uh, I was there that night that that man showed up and he, he, he asked these girls' fathers to go on this quest. And I thought, wow, this is such a heroic town. These are my kind of people. Uh, so I made it a point to uh, hike through this town and check on these families. And year after year when I would come by and I'd see these beautiful young women growing into the, the strong uh, uh, adults that they became and, and still their fathers were gone. So I would try to sit with them every once in a while. I am highly trained because as you know, delivering mail on the Sword Coast is very dangerous business. So I try to help them learn a couple of good combat moves. Uh, I watched from afar when they had that battle with the boys. I was very proud, very proud indeed. Uh, these are my girls. I'm, I'm so proud of them. Sure. And you would bring on your travels, you would come across a great warrior or a great cleric, and you would invite them to the the, the homestead of these these four girls. These Happily, they all lived together. Yes, they all lived together. Yes, well, and, I knew they had these specific interests, and when I would meet a fellow traveler, I'd go, "Oh, you know who you should meet, Sister Rose. You guys would get along famously." And I'd bring bring them by on my next trip. And they would say, "I will stay for a week to train them." But they'd always stay no less than two weeks or three. For the food was delicious, the company was lovely, and the talent in which they were training was beyond measure. And every time those men and women left, you, they left better warriors, better women, braver, stronger, more agile, more able. So you were at Candlekeep. In the open market, they have the best figs in the open market, and you are collecting figs, Kiki. And you hear out of the corner of your ear, I just don't understand why someone would wear so much jewelry. Don't they know that they become a target? And something in the back of your mind remembers that night that you were there. Yes. And remembers the garb that that man who took these fathers away was wearing. And with that, you hightail it back to the village where the girls live. In the night, ladies, you decide amongst you, with discussions with your, your mother and the rest of your family, that you will prepare to follow this man into the mists of Barovia and see if you can, in any way, shape, or form, discover the mystery of what happened to your fathers. So 
through the crack of dawn. Joy, what does your mother do to prepare you to leave? She doesn't really want me to leave. She thinks it's a bad idea, but she knows that I don't really listen to anything that she says because I like to try to be the kind of barden adventurer that my dad was. And so she tells me not to, but my friends say that it's a really good idea and I try to listen to my friends because I think they know better than my mom at this point. What does she know? She's been in the same place for so long. So I just kind of go with it. And here I am. Regrowth, the night before, you have a moment. You can choose to take that moment with anyone you wish. Who um, is that person and what, and what happens? I, I think it's this, this moment of um, being out in the, the forest just outside of our town. The, the moon is not quite full but it's full enough for me to be able to see my favorite uh, standing stone construction that uh, the druids of, my, of our town have made. And so I'm standing out in the moonlight, communing with nature. And uh, I, I think that Karina, you, all, you have also found yourself out in the moonlight wandering and you see me at the circle. Uh, yeah, I see Regrowth at the circle. Uh, my mom told me to come out and go to the deepest part of the woods and call for guidance from some god I've never heard of named Glossia or something like that. I've, I, I don't know. It seemed weird. She put all this stuff on my face and just told me to come out here and try to convene with that. And I see regrowth and I'm like, yo, what's up? What are we doing? You know? Has regrowth, has regrowth ever seen you with this makeup before? No. This is the oh, first wow. time. Okay. So um, it, it kind of looks permanent, but mom assured me it might come off. <laughs> so, when you, so Karina, mm -hmm. what does that look like when you when you go looking for this god you don't know? I mean, I just follow mom's direction, like straight. Yeah, but what does that mean? Do you, so do you go in the middle of the woods and be like, "Hey, what's up?" Do you... Like, I I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just out in the middle of the woods, following directions, and you know, and looking I'm... for what was the god's name again? Glossia. It's fabulous. Glossia. I love this name. I'm 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 just looking around and just kind of like, all right, Glossia, give me your guidance. Glossia, all of a sudden, as you say that, Karina, a small moth comes down from the trees above you. You're like, oh, that's weird. It's a big moth. It kind of looks like it's glowing. Another moth comes down. This one is equally as large. All of a sudden, as you say Glissaia, around you swarms hundreds of glowing moths. And not only are they near you, but as they glow, their wings are in complete syncopation. And in front of you, they make a visage of a woman. Karina, for this adventure, if you are to say the name Glissaia, or, or if you say Glissaia, Come to my side. I will grant you a reroll. And I will grant you, stay with me, <laughs> the ability to glow for six rounds. Okay. Okay. Lucky! Yeah. So Messiah answers your call. And she now lives, her power lives in you and you can feel it, okay? Sister Rose, mm -hmm. what, what happens on your last night? You'd find me at my convent consulting with one of the more, uh, I guess, knowledgeable or wiser members of my order. What do you ask? Prioress, I... Is it wrong for me to want to seek out my father for no other reason than to beat the brakes off of him? I don't, I don't believe so. Actually, Kiki, could you play, could you play? The Prioress? The Prioress? Yes, sure. Thank you. One more time. Sorry, go ahead, mm -hmm. Sister. Do that again. Prioress, 
Is it wrong for me to want to find my father for no other reason than to beat the brakes off of him? My sister, our motivations are mysterious, even to ourselves. So I offer to you that the journey to find him may be worth more and you may find yourself feeling differently when you do. And what if I don't? Then you are merely being true to yourself. Mm -hmm. And truly, there is no greater calling than being true to ourselves. Very true. Thank you, Priorus. The morning comes and it's each mother's opportunity to say goodbye to their daughter. And having lost a husband that they loved and having been warriors themselves, they know they, that what lays before you is terrifying for them and should be for you as well. And each one of them has scribbled a letter of their truest thoughts to hand to you. So you all have a letter from your mother for this adventure. And as you start to make your way into the darkness, following this this, this bougie clad dude. <laughs> Kiki, you come riding over the corner. I do. You come riding over the horizon. What do you say to these four women that are escaping into the morning I dew? say, hold, please. Uh, <laughs> I, I have an idea of what's going on here. All I do is I humbly beg that you, you allow me to accompany you. My, my father is long since passed. He was a lovely man. He taught me the postal service business. Uh, I owe to him my livelihood. And it would just be um, a, a real honor if I could, I could join you on this quest. Uh, uh, I would love to learn from you and uh, be of service where I can. Get over here, Mama Bear. <laughs> and regrowth reaches their arms and grabs you and all of you come together to share this moment one last time before you travel into the midst of Barovia. There's there's a little too much love here. I Sorry, just, you, you can no. walk away. You don't have yeah, to be just, I don't yeah. I don't want to put actions in I, I, I stay for like a second and it's just going on a little too long and I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna you guys finish that up. I'm just gonna <laughs> backstep. But Fair you enough. feel free though. You Fair know enough. And I'll and wait the, patiently. And the guy in the in the um, the barrel wagon looks awkwardly at all of you and cha and moves off in uh, into the direction of the mist. You land in the land of Barovia. There's nothing good about this. Barovia is horrific. Children are born without souls. They walk around like empty husks. Wolves cry out in the night as almost, you've been here for three months, almost every time you lay down and you're about to be taken by sleep, your watch is over and you're just about to drift. A howl will ring out way too close, almost as if they know you're about to escape. It rains constantly. There is no shred of sunlight. Vampires, and this is important, roam the land. You have Vamp seen zombies. Vampires roam vampires the, the, the land. land. I vampires feel like that's zombies. a myth. That's a myth. Vampires aren't real. You said that the first time they descended upon your camp and one of them <laughs> almost took all of you out. And then you realize not only are vampires spawn real, um, but they regenerate. There's something that you all know that they regenerate life force as they go through combat. And they are not to be trifled with. Kiki, the one thing that you taught these young women as you were training them is to work together. So as you guys, as players, I want you to know, anytime you take an action, they work together, I will, you can either combine, this is a uh, uh, a rule that I learned from Ms. Deborah Ann Wool. You can either combine your, um, your pluses or you can both take a role to achieve the task. Does that make sense? Also, yeah. I want you to know the way I play the game, if you make a badass move that is based in reality, it will be rewarded. I believe that you are working together that one of the things that Kiki gave you in her, cre in, in, in her journey as your master is to work together is how you survive, period, the end. 
But I'm want giving... to meet with one heart, as my as my father used to say. Exactly. Um, and and so Barovia. So the rain is nonstop. You are constantly cold, and you've been here for three months. You have spent time with Madame Eva, who has given you directions on how to bring down the master of this domain, Strahd. You have not found your fathers yet. In fact, never, you have not heard a word of where they are or, and at this point, it becomes almost irrelevant that you realize that the horror of Barovia is that is being mastered by a horrific beast of the undead. Strahd von Zarevich rules this land with ruthlessness and absolute evil. Your journey of your finding out your fathers is now become irrelevant. And your cause, one true guiding cause, is to defeat this beast. And right now, we are in the battle of our lives. You find yourself at the Wizard of Wines. You have been, as you came into the winery, in this big vineyard spread out. As you're approaching the winery, all of a sudden you see a small twig blade make its way towards you. This is a, that's a camera, that's a twig blade. <laughs> Tiny. Yeah. There's, little, there's little six creatures come up to you and they attack, attack, attack. And they're little, they barely come up to your knee and you swat them down. And the next thing you know, you look up and up comes 15 more. Up comes 20, up comes 30 more. All of a sudden, out comes something a little bigger, a vine blight, ambling differently, reach longer. And when they bite, it's not one point of health. It's four. And all of a sudden, you're an hour into an onslaught of animated twigs. And they are cutting you bit by bit, ribbon by ribbon. You will crush three, and one will bite at your neck. You'll crush four, and one will get at your ankle. And you are overwhelmed with twig points. Who is, who's our thief? Who's the thief? Karina, you're our thief. God bless you. As the bat, I mean, I didn't, I was like, wait a second, I didn't even know who the thief is. <laughs> Karina, you yeah. look off. And at the top of the winery, it's a two-story winery, about 600 yards off. You see a small little halfling waving the staff, a black staff. And every time he waves, a trail of blackness follows behind him. And you realize every time he mumbles and waves, waves of these twig lights start to animate. And now the ones that you've killed have starting to rise up at your feet. And you realize the only thing you can do is full break. And you run out and you start to make your way along the wall, along the outside. Peek. Describe your character, please, and what she looks like, and give me the last move that she just did. All right. Uh, so Kiki, uh, she's quite stocky. I've got long, a long graying reddish braid down my back. I I wear uh, knee socks and uh, long shorts, no matter what the weather. Uh, but very stocky, big tree trunk legs, right? And uh, uh, older, you know, middle-aged, she's got beautiful wrinkles, just gorgeous, like a woman who smiled her whole life. Uh, but when she fights, you just see this exhilaration come up into her face. And uh, watching around, looking at all my, my, my uh, young women here, holding their own. Uh, so I've got this long glaze that I have. So uh, I'm just breaking in circles around trying to take down these twig lights and cut off any kind of... Uh, limbs on these vines that I can. Uh, and the very last thing that I do is if you were watching, there's a little raise in my jacket at the back of your beast, a little bit of skin, and it glows a little bit. Almost like you got a little peak of something there. And I disappear and then reappear again 40 feet away and continue my spinning onslaught of these twigs. So I'm just trying to pop up in different places and clear areas around these, uh, these young women. Awesome. Joy. Describe your character and the last badass move you just did. So Joy is an elf and she's about 6'2", because that's not how tall I am in real life. And she's got really great ears and she's a really life kind of person. But I'd really like to describe what she just did because 
but I need to know how many creatures were within 10 feet of her at that point that she made the attack. Yeah, it doesn't, anything you want. I mean, right now you are surrounded by gobs of these twigs. I mean, you're now stepping on them and they're climbing up their dead brethren and they're getting towards your neck and your throat. You're so, I mean, everyone, Karina left. I mean, she basically left you all to die. You think that she was close to death herself and took off. Accurate. Um, But you are in this moment, you are in the middle of this battle surrounded by gobs of these twig blades. So I think that she does the only thing that she can do when she gets extremely overwhelmed and her anxiety takes over her entire body is that she starts to attack and sing the song that her dad used to sing to her whenever she was really overwhelmed. And she says, never give up and never get in. There's no battle before you that you cannot win. I don't care if you're happy or if you are sad. No matter where you journey, I'm always your dad. And oh. at that moment, oh. she is going to cast Shatter at fourth level, and it's going to be 5d8 damage if it lands. And she's going to take, that's, that's, take out everyone that's within 10 feet of her. And in my imagination, that's probably about 15 people, monster people things, that she just demolished with a song. That is the power of the bard, and you indeed shatter these. You 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 sing your song, and at your feet they immediately eviscerate, and it, it spreads out to each one of them and picks off like a handful of these twig blights. And with that, you see coming over the the edge of the vineyard a big like, like six of these vine blights, and they're moving towards you. And you realize you don't have enough songs. Regrowth. There's always Describe what you song. look like. Describe what you look like in your last badass move. Okay. <clears throat> so I am uh, I'm a druid who I use fire a lot. I burn away. Amazing. <laughs> kind of my whole thing. I burn it away, let new life come in, back in. There's not a whole lot of new life coming back in Barovia, so I'm definitely feeling drained. Um, however, I have my flame tongue, my magic flame tongue sword. <clears throat> and the last badass thing I did was after casting some like druid fire spells and realizing we were uh, being overwhelmed by this this blight, um, I draw my flame tongue sword and kind of um, shake it to ignite it. And it lights up, it, it uh, casts light in a 40 foot radius and dim light for an extra additional 40 feet beyond that. So it's like this beacon of sun. And I've got, I do a huge long sweeping move in front of oh. to capture a bunch of these blights. Oh, and it eviscerates them. Whoosh! As you as you go through, they they they're they're de- they're decimated. What do you look? What do you physically look like? What do I, okay, so I am a I'm a I'm a tiefling. Um, I have scorch scorch marks on the ends of my fingers and around my eyes, like that, like like paper, like burned paper. Um, and my skin is it, it's a, this this sort of pale ivory, red hair. It look it looks like me with a little bit of makeup on. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, and then with this sword, um, the, the she's she's sort of a tiefling of few words, but she definitely she knows. She says, "There's one thing I know about fire, it, that it can burn a lot of wood." And, <laughs> <laughs> you say that you say that to Joy, and she's like singing a song. You have that like <laughs> one quip, and you eviscerate a whole swath of them. Sister Rose, mm-hmm. what do you look like? Describe yourself, and then give me the last badass move you had. Sister Rose is about 5'10". She's a half-elf with caramel skin. She wears golden chainmail, uh, you know, adorned with, with the roses of her order uh, in maroon on her shield. And she has a very large mace. Uh, nice. She towers above the crowd, the, the light, the moonlight glinting off of her mail. And as she brings down a mace onto one of these like small wooden creatures, she casts thaumaturgy, her voice echoing through the through the battlefield, and she says, Sisters, if we die here today, let the cliffs ring with the sounds of our destruction! For we will yes! fight these ruinous creatures into the ground with our fury! <laughs> oh yes! my god! <laughs> I see a breakdown, Kiki. <laughs> 
like. <laughs> if I could cuss, I would give you a big F yeah. <laughs> Karina, you hear the scoop of this battle cry of Sister Rose as you're climbing the second story. You flip up and you make your way to the top. And as you get to the top, you hear this howl of passion, battle cry, and you can feel your blood boil. And as you look over to see that your sisters are alive, and surviving, you see people succumb. She is being overwhelmed by those vine blights. And she falls to her knees and she's enveloped instantly. And you can see her grasping for anything to hold on to. Now, Mama Kiki! Now, Mama Kiki! Yeah. In front of you, first of all, I'm going to lay out the land and then I want you to describe what you look like and your badass one. In front of you is a half filthy druid who is caked in mud. And as you just crest over the top of this roof, you can waft and smell him. It's almost as if he bathed in death itself. Mm -hmm. And he passes this staff, blackness, true blackness, evil permeates the air. And he's mumbling something with hatred. And as he does, you can see in the distance the vineyard, which is dry and empty and broken. And Baron rise up in a tree end and start to make you its way to your sisters. What are you gonna do? First of all, describe yourself and then give me the badass move that you are gonna do right now. Like as I like horror movie, like crawl up on the on the roof like i peer up i see i see mama kiki and i'm like not today halfling and i pull out both of my rapiers and i'm going mm -hmm. in for like a sneak attack to like pin him on the uh roof good give me your sneak attack and don't miss don't miss oh joy well uh fingers crossed here <laughs> Oh, I didn't roll it. Oh! Ooh. Does okay. a... Let's see here. We might be okay. Hold on. I was all up in the spells. You're at advantage, right? Oh. Sneak attack. Yep, sure I am. See, I know rules. Yes! Yeah! Oh, all right. Good. That'll be a 25 to hit. Um, and then... Do I get both the swords since we're going same time and I'm proficient in two weapon yes, fighting yes, yes yes so we're gonna go one two and then we're gonna pop in four of these bad boys because vorpal dice are awesome um and because i am a bugbear my dear friend would did you not know that yes no know. Did you know describe that. what you look like describe what you look like before you do this move so Just I, to... i'm a bugbear with long flowy silver black fur i'm about seven five mm. tree fitty uh you know <laughs> but super intimidating now that i have this permanent war paint yes i'm a big Hell thing yeah. that hides in small places baby <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yep, it's coming in hot right here. And because I am a bugbear, would you allow the surprise attack, which gives me an extra 2d6 on the first round of combat? <laughs> yes! Marina! <laughs> they have, she had no idea you're there! He has no <laughs> idea you're there. He's just, he's reveling in the fact that he's about to crush this old woman, this this postal All woman. right, we coming in hot, baby. <laughs> there it is. Oh, a lot of dice. Uh, plus 10 points of damage to that, so 36 points of damage. Whoa! 36 points of damage. Mm hmm Is he That's pinned to the roof? That's all I need to know. <laughs> he is not pinned. You strike him, and in a moment of absolute terror, he turns, loses his, fall, his footing, and goes over the edge. As he does... The staff flies out of his hands and crashes on the ground. As that staff hits the ground, it shatters. As if a thousand screams radiates from the As everything around it starts to die and the land itself is poisoned. And these 
creatures that had swarmed Kiki go limp and lay at your feet. Cut to many hours later. Nice shot, sit, Karina. <laughs> as you sit in the Wizard of Wines, your host is Davian Martikoff. He's an older gentleman. And he, as you sit in front of the fires and you nurse your wounds, he brings you a simple stew and a huge goblet of wine. And he says to each one of you, he's like, there is uh, the only good thing about running a winery is uh, I can do this. I can give this to you. Thank you so much for saving my winery. For tonight, we are alive. And for tonight, we will celebrate this moment. This is Champagne de Stomp. It is our finest. There is only 40 bottles left, unfortunately. Well, that should last us the rest of the night. Well, you know. Yes. I have broken it out for you to celebrate this moment, but without you, we would all be gone. That's right. You have to know something, that the wine in the Barovia is the only joy there is. Without it, there is nothing. Regrowth, can you create bubbly water to replace <laughs> what we drink? Or is it only still? Yeah, I think I think I, I've got something. I could I could probably cast gust, get some some wind in there, blow through it. <laughs> uh, if you could if you could uh, share yourself with all of Barovia, they would like it. But as of now, this is it. And without our wine for we look at the vineyard. It is gone, it is dead. This vineyard operates by the glory of magic, and our magic is gone. Our our vats have been poisoned. The druid, he poisoned them. So Barovia, the people of Barovia are now going to be dry. There is nothing left. This nah, I mean, it'll be all right. Just get some fertilizer, throw it out there. Uh, uh, you know, maybe some mirror. Oh, you know what? Maybe regrowth could help you out with that. You know, she. It's in the name, maybe. I do a little produce flame, just a little cantrip, like. Ooh, Ooh see. It's very nice, very nice indeed. <laughs> I've seen druids. We have tried for years. The land is poisoned. It is cursed by Strahd. The only reason it worked is that there was magic, and now the magic is gone, stolen, it's gone for years. Have, have you ever actually tried listening to the plants and seeing what they might have to say about it? Uh, yes. I have tried, but have you tried listening to the plants in Barovia? I have, but tell me, tell me what it's like. <laughs> well, every time you commune or, or had a, a moment with a plant, you realize that that plant has been reborn into the same type of plant for hundreds of years. Hmm. And the people of Barovi have been born into the same existence thousands of times. But once in Barovia, you realize that once somebody passes, they can never leave. Their spirit can never leave the mists. And that goes for the plants and that goes for the animals as well. Yes, Karina? I, I, look, I, I mean, how many years ago was it when our dads came through here? Like, maybe question. he might know something, you know? Bugbear looking dude, black fur, you know, really hard to miss. Uh, yeah, it, it's a great, it's a, it's a good question. So he thinks about it. He does not remember, but he does say, give me a, give me a charisma check, Karina. Oh, uh, that oh, will nice. be a 19. Nope, not a 19. Wrong. Modif nope, 19. So oh, nice. Okay. So he says to you, he's deep in his cups now, and he says to you, I do not know your your father. I don't know any of your fathers. There's people that come through here all the time. They die, and they are left to walk the walls. For in Barovia, at midnight, every night, the spirits walk from the cathedral to the top of Ravenloft. All adventurers who have been taken in this land, that's where their spirits are. 
But if your fathers are alive, they are in that procession. Hmm. That sounds very depressing. Because if you're them, for all eternity, you are rose, you are, ri you are risen from the eternal death, and you are forced to walk every single night to the top of Ravenloft and jump off into the ravine. And as they fall, you can hear the screams like a thousand babies, like the staff that just crashed. Every night, it haunts the people of this land. I don't know what happened to my accent right there, but it was really too horrible. Uh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> but he was French for a second, and then he's kind of <laughs> Irish. <laughs> but I know that that's... Every night, the spirits of adventurers will walk, and then they fall into the ravine, and they die. And they scream a thousand deaths. Hmm. Ugh, I lean over to Sister Rose, hmm. and almost, almost like I'm not taking this very seriously. I'm like, remind me not to die here. <laughs> I mean, I feel like they kind of deserved it, because if you die, were you really a very good adventurer? Like... I mean, so are you saying that our dads, like, deserve to die for doing someone's, like, fetch quest? Is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, they obviously weren't very good at what they did, you know? Well, they, they were died. the best, they were the best in our town. I when know. they were young. I mean, at this juncture, who knows? Are we sure I know this all sounds like a lot. We're not. But I know that you like you have your wines and they have their questions. But um, do you have something that's not wine, like maybe a juice? Uh, yes, I'm sure we could find something for you. Juice it is. Yep. And he uh, he's got a couple sons there, and uh, they go running off and they scurry off. Do you do you realize as you go ahead, Karina? Do you want? Oh no, something? I was like, how old are these sons? It's been a while since we've seen young <laughs> young like um, young boys. Like, mind you, I have all of this on my face permanently. <laughs> so I'm like, and your bugbear, and your bugbear, and they look up? at you as if, as Let's if, go. yeah, it's funny. As you look at one of the young men, give me a perception check. Oh! Nice. So as you look at the young man, uh, he's beautiful. He's a uh, uh, he's um, a swarthy young man. He's beautiful. He's got this really handsome beard, and um, he looks at you. And as he does, you see like an inner eyelid clip through. And are you into that though? Is that like? <laughs> I mean, I'm a bugbear living in a common world, so let's be honest. I'll take what I can get when it comes to a wink, you know. Yeah, as, as he starts, as he um, starts to go through, as he starts to leave, as he leaves that room, he looks at you, and you could swear that as he does, as he, as he just passes past the door frame, you see a shadow of a bird flap through. It's almost as if he changed into a bird. Just about then, before anyone brings back your drink, Joy, you hear this <laughs> knocking at the door. Really loud. It's late. Who knocks like that? It's a Who is it? Somebody <laughs> sending a message. Um, what do you this, what do you guys want to do? What in this moment, is there anything you want to do before uh Mardikov answers the door? Uh, so earlier in the evening, I did want to sure. ask, what do we know? D did your father share anything with with you, 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 you ladies, with, before they left about what they were, what the quest was for? Do we have any information about why they came here? No. Nothing. Other yeah, other nothing. than the fact that the guy with a lot of jewelry told them to go on a quest because one of our fathers could read. That was and it. Your, your mother's never shared anything. My goodness. All well, right. My mother nothing... shared that he was a bastard for leaving us. Well, I can understand. It's very. Oh. I, I myself was a single parent. I have two beautiful boys. Um, uh. They did oh. not go into the family. What other names? How, how, names? how old are they? Beautiful Sammy and Cliffy. Oh, sweetheart, they would love you. Um, if you're interested, my goodness, I mean, to have a daughter like you, I would be so lucky. Um, oh, dear, there's More someone knocks. at the door. They, uh, they, can, they can wait. Let's keep getting Karina laid. Yes. <laughs> and with that, the door opens Do you think up. you would go for me? 
<laughs> oh yeah, honey. Out outside, as you've had a lot of champagne lit le stomp, yes. um, you're feeling frisky. And outside, you see this um, uh, a man that you almost clad in the exact same way as the as the man originally and the man that led you here on the travels. It was a it was quite a long travel into the mists of Barovia when you landed. And as you went along the way, you understood that the man was a of of the Stani, um, of the Stani lineage, and that is like a, a a tribe of people here in Barovia, and they are free to pass in and out of the mists. And as you got into the mist, he told you, once you are in, you can never leave. And he left you on the side of the road, and you made your way to this point. Oh my goodness! So as you what a bastard! Yeah, he was kind of a bastard. Yeah, he was kind of a bastard. He. <laughs> drops you off at this house and 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 off and on this woman selling you these dream pies and all oh. kinds of crazy stuff happened um but at this door is of this uh man who's a Vistani, and Marnikov's talking to him for a second and comes back in and says i just want to know that there's a, a man here by the name of pa papa maxims he is uh his tent is outside he put the tent up at the at the base of the the vineyard, he says he's here to see you. Mm. It is up to you if you want to go and see him, but he is, uh, he is here, yeah. He's, he is here to see all of us. He is, I was told to tell you that he waits for you. It is all Somehow he knew, this. he knew we would be here. That's very strange indeed. What is this uh, guy look like? the mist, we can call him Mr. I love your joy. <laughs> You always say the perfect thing in the perfect moments. You raise my spirit. Uh, there, you are just there. You are one in a million. There is no one like you, Joy. Never say you bring it. hope in a bag because you're the male lady. That's right. Give me, a, uh, give me a perception check, can you? Who? Me? No, Joy. Joy. Yeah. There, you there it is. I'm well perceptive. Done. <laughs> what does that give you? A nine. And <laughs> okay, good. hold on, let me check my ability score and see if I have Andrew. a thing. Yeah, that'd be great. That would be the normal thing that somebody's supposed to do. Yay! That's a twelve. Oh, nice. Okay. So as as Monaco comes over and says he is waiting for you, you can see he's a little he's um he he's he's a little anxious. He's a little nervous. Do you, you're, you're Why are you like, moving like that? I, I don't like these moments. I don't, Papa Maxims is not, uh, he's not for me. I don't like what he does. It's not, uh, some people like it. I am not the fan. What does he do? He is like Madame Eva, and Madame Eva, very early on in your adventure, is a, is a fortune teller. So he says he's like Madame Eva. Oh. Do you know her? He tells, uh, he reads cards. So knowing the future makes you uncomfortable. It just, that says a lot about you. I'm, I'm very curious. It's, uh, it's not for me. Maybe it's for you. He looks for you. It is up to you what you do. It's not up to me. Uh, well, I'm an adventure, so it's helpful for us. Yes, I'm happy to speak to him. So, uh, uh, yes. What did he do to you to make you so wary, or what happened to you that makes you so wary? He says, he kind of barks back at you. He's like, he did nothing to me. I don't like him. I don't like what he does. It's just my thing. It's me. I don't like it. You can like it. You can go and sit and read his cards. Toroka is not for me. I don't. I'm here for you. You can stay for as long as you want. You have free wine for the rest of your life. Let me tell you your future. There you go. You sit here and get drunk. That's all you need to know. Whoa, calm down. Yeah. Calm down. I I'm, just, I'm, I'm just asking I'm not questions. Drunk. What? What did you say, Joy? I've got what? juice. I'm not drunk. <laughs> well, all right. I am a bit buzzed. I am celebratory. And when this comes, it's like this foreboding. I don't like it. It's that's me. But if you mm -hmm. like to go, go, go. I, I stagger to my feet. I'm a lot more drunk than I'd like to admit. And I kind of lean on Sister Rose's shoulder. <laughs> and, and I'm like, we got this. 
Oh yeah. Let's, uh, let's go meet. Let's go meet this clown. I will. I would like to follow them as well. Uh, I, I have been them. drinking my whole life. This is nothing. I'm a. I'm an extreme lightweight. <laughs> I, uh, I pat her on the shoulder and, uh, and say, the, you know, and you will learn, it will be a fantastic life. You will learn to absorb these beautiful chemicals into your body. <laughs> As you're leaving, you have this big goblet you're taking with you. He says, wait, you may need this. And he pours more, he pours more in your goblet. Mm-hmm. It's Rosie, he pours more in your um, goblet. Joy, he offers you, are you sure you don't want some? You are going to go meet Papa Maskson's? Uh, no, I don't want to drink it. In fact, uh, Kiki takes a, a small little roll something out of her bag and lights it and just starts to smoke it a little bit. She's like, I just got to mellow out a little bit after this. Um, can I? Ama- amazing. Yes. Kiki, that's an amazing choice. Kiki is very, she's very mellow now. She's thinking back to the old days when she was as young as these other ladies. And, oh, the fun that she had. Oh dear, well, we you're better coming. go in for the guy, guy sticks his head in and he says, are you coming? Papa Mask waits. I don't know, I really like hanging out in this room with the four of you. Okay. He walks away. <laughs> he walks down. He walks in. You asked how long the stream is. The stream is now eight hours. He walks away. What do you expect when you give us role-playing opportunities? We are going I, to take it. I love every second of it. We can stay here all night. This, all right. ladies and gentlemen, is a seven-part series. <laughs> yep. Into the mist. The first episode is just all of us getting drunk and high at a winery. Um, <laughs> Uh, the show is actually called Puberty. Maybe you've heard yes. of it. Uh, it's a whole bunch of young girls growing up in the world, and we ended up in Barovia. Uh, you know, it happens. <sighs> With our role Sister model, Rose. the male lady. Of course. Yes. Sister Rose, yes. you walk out the door, and you start to make your way towards this tent, which is appearing. And picture, if you will, like a small circus tent, like sort of like, um, you know, it's pitched in the middle with like poles around the outside. It's, it's, it's colorful. But the colors are kind of awkward. It's like mustard and purple, and mm. it's not pleasing to the eye. Um, I love and a good you, tent. It's a good, it's a good tent, and, there, and there's a couple. There's a bunch of horses around. A good around. carnival and, tent. I love a good tent. It's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> and you, and you got that in this game. That's the joy of the game. You can get what you want, and if you need a tent, you have a tent. So. As you see this incredible tent with the most amazing colors, you see a collection of horses gathered around and a bunch of people sort of making camp for the night. And off in the distance, you see just outside of this, the flap of this tent, you see sort of like a shriveled man with like a scallop. What is this thing called in the back, in your back? Not scallop. That's a scarab? Scarab. So it's like, no, that it's this thing back here. This thing is like all out of whack. The shoulder blade. Shoulder blade. His shoulder blade is all out of whack and he's bony and his wrists are like rolled over. And you can see that he's like sort of like almost as if he's using the force in um, Star Wars. He's moving the twigs, like the piles of dead twigs. He's moving and having them animate and walk into a fire. And every time they do, they sort of blaze green. And as you approach the tent, he, that figure steps back inside the tent. And the man that was at the door, beckoning you to come, um, sits at the front and he says to you, Papa Maxims is waiting. Please go in. I would like to look at Karina and Regrowth and say, hey, if we go inside, it's getting a little oh no, intense. Oh my god. Kiki cracks Take... up. Kiki loves it. Joy, you are at disadvantage for the next hour. I can't. You're at disadvantage for the next hour. I can't. Hour. Joy Kiki... is cracking me yes. up so bad. I can't. Okay. Absolutely. Kiki, As you walk Kiki in. reaches back into a, a past life and just feels like, oh, something about twigs and jokes. It feels very <laughs> familiar. Uh, a fire pit aglow with purple embers illuminates the interior of this tent, casting an eerie violet light on a large flat stone covered with a wolf hide and nothing but a deck of cards. A bald man with his face painted to resemble a marionette sits cross-legged in front of the deck. 
He smiles when he sees you, and his words are deep and raspy. I know why you are here, and I can help you if you are the fated ones. If not, I cannot speak for what the cards have in store. And who you see in front of you is a beautiful black man. His hair is is shaved bald, and he's got painted a marionette face. He wears nothing but a loincloth, and his body is Adonis like. And as you look around this room, there's no the figure of the man you saw before is not to be seen. Mm-hmm. And he lays down the cards in front of you. And he says, Your fate lies in these cards. If you so desire, allow me to read them for you. If not, we have nothing else to speak of. Well, know shoot. that the fates have been sent. I have been sent by the fates themselves. I would like to lean over to the regrowth and be like, you think he's into bugbears? <laughs> <laughs> I think we should definitely find out. He cool. hears you. He clearly hears you. And he says... <laughs> I am into anything to be found in nature. Oh, hey. The question is, <laughs> you know are, you in, are you into me? <laughs> <laughs> and you see his eyes are like, <laughs> there's something about, can you give me, give me a perception check? Karina, give me a perception check. Uh, oh, yeah. You can see you you can under you understand his voice sounds like he's been smoking whatever came out of Kiki's back pocket for a hundred <laughs> years. His voice sounds timeless. His body says Adonis. You can do whatever you want. I'm not here to do. Look, I, I lean over to regrowth and I'd like give her like a little high five, like, yes. All right, we'll do the talk after. Um, um, I'll, we've I'll also know. we've also had some drinks. I do want this to be on the table, so it's not just a bug. Obviously, the acceptance. biggest mistake I've ever made as a DM was providing any wine for Karina and Club. Um, <laughs> so, you guys, what do you do? So, he has these decks in front of yes. him. He has this deck of cards is sitting in front of him, and he looks at you, um, seemingly losing his patience. Hmm. Uh, I, th- I, I think it would be fantastic to uh, hear uh, what you have to say. Uh, we are here on a quest. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd just like to brighten things up a little bit. And I, I reach in my bag and I, I pull out a lot of things in there. I have to reach around and find it. But I pull out a, a lantern. And as it lights, uh, this is a lantern of revealing. So anything that is invisible in the area should be revealed. Cool. Give me an archive. Give me a um. Give me a deception check. Going for high. A deception check. As you pull that lantern out. Yes. Um, are, are you just gonna slap it down and 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 light and, it? Yes. Yeah, turn it on. It doesn't look like a different. It looks like a normal lantern. It's just that when the light is cast in within thirty feet, it'll reveal anything that's invisible. Okay. You want to so just want a deception still? Yeah, please. Okay. Oh, it's not good. You you go to reach you go to reach in to do it, yes. and the guards the guard that's in the room there's the guard is still in the room steps over and grabs that away from you, and he says to you he says there is no need for this. I say, can I have it back when we're done? Absolutely. All right. And and the marionette faced man, picture like the thing in Saw, like uh-huh. is now right. his eyes start to bug out. And he says to you, he says, clearly your fate is not interested in revealing itself to you. Well, well, hold on. You didn't tell us what we had to do to get the cards and stuff. You know, we're just making sure no one's going to attack us from behind. You have to admit that this is a little sketchy, even for Barovia. You know, some magical mustard purple tint pops up out of nowhere. And, you know, you're a quite attractive guy, if I do say so myself. Our face paint matches. We might have great kids together. But... You know, you have to admit, like, why we're a little cautious. You have made yourself clear. And I have made my offer crystal clear. 
Speak now if you so desire your cards read. Your fate lies before you. It is up to you. I am but a messenger of the future. Sister Rose, I feel you might be our, our best uh, mm. advocate in this scenario. Very well. If, if you all agree. Yeah. I can read three at I agree. one city. Three is my number. All right. I fear not the future. I fear no future. No, with that, he laughs. <laughs> I'm willing to see it. So tell me, so I have a deck of cards in my hand. There's none of this has been planned out. <laughs> so you tell me when to stop. Okay. Stop. I was going to have it go abnormally long, but <laughs> I feel like we've tortured him enough today. I'm not, not nearly enough. Not nearly Nine enough. hours later. All right. So I'm laying them out. I could, I don't want to show you this. This is a bunch of shit show. Okay. I'm laying this out in a, in a cross legs in a cross leg situation. Uh, let me do this. Oh, okay. Ooh. Okay. This is I have terrible penmanship. Okay. <laughs> so which card he, he lays them out in front of you and says, Your future. Let me just fix this. Other way, Matt. Other way. There you go. TV folks at home, ain't this fun? Okay. <laughs> right. I'll fix it, folks. Um, so he says, which card would you like, Red? Any one of them. Your fate has already been decided, so it does not matter. As I am the righteous right hand of Fury, I shall choose the right hand of the cross. So this one? <gasps> mm -hmm. That's my right hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he turns it over and he says, ah, the broken one. An abyss, shattered shadows, twine, unraveled, straw breaks all. The receiver, he, as, as he says this, he looks at you and he says, you may not believe in fate, but fate believes in you. And as he says the last line of the Broken One's card reading, you feel a shiver roll up your spine as your fingers and your extremities start to tingle. You are inflicted with madness. I'm gonna have you roll a dice. I need you to roll a hundred-sided dice and tell Maybe two tens, maybe. Yeah. Or five D20s, I mean. Ooh. Yeah, we can go crazy with it, girl. <laughs> Let's do that. As I go to my healthy, my um, healthy, my healthy. Ooh. Six <laughs> nine. <laughs> We're adults here. It's okay. It's okay. We're adults. We are. are nice. We? Some of us. We're Canonically, we're kids. No. <laughs> Canonically, I, we would love 69. Listen, I, I may so, be from the mission, but I do more than missionary. Oh, 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 line of the night. There are children! As, okay, as you, as you really are 69, your, your body starts to shake. Uncontrollably. So. It feels amazing mm -hmm. as, as you feel your body start to ride and you, your mind starts to twitch and shake. You are hallucinating. Hallucinations come and go over the, over, until this is removed. <laughs> you have disadvantage on all ability checks. Oh. So as any given moment, you can be hallucinating, okay? Yeah. Who shall read their card now? How aware? This is fun. I want to play. How aware are we all that this has happened to her? Can we tell? So you don't have any idea. No so that idea. Was me. All right. No idea. So I would, if that was any other game, I would have pulled Sister Rose to the side and said, "This no is what happened." Just curious. All but right. you can see her. She has a visceral reaction. Her body is engaged, right. and you can see her twitching and shaking. And all of a sudden, you, in this moment. 
she's having some kind of distant conversation with someone. Cool. This feels right. amazing. You should try it. <laughs> Who is next? I uh, play. Joy, which card do you choose to pick? The middle one. The middle one. Artifact. In that moment appears on the the wolf hide the head of a jack-o'-lantern materializes in front of you. Hi. The jack-o'-lantern, Joy, gives you the ability it's like a helmet it's like a it's in the helmet but it's in the face of like a jack-o'-lantern so once you put it on and you flip the face shield down you look like this badass jack-o'-lantern the jack the helmet of the jack-o'-lantern allows you to assume a spirit to call forth the spirit and and ride it for one minute time and distance mean nothing to the spirit world. It can travel anywhere in an instant. You are incorporeal, you can't pick anything up, but you can see through the spirit's eyes. This is a rare magic item created for this event. Okay. So you can do anything a ghost can do, you, or a spirit can do, you can fly through walls, you can go to the moon and back. You can't leave the realm of Barovia, but once you have that on and you use, you say the magic word, whatever you so choose that to be, then you can, a spirit will appear for you and you will meld with it. And when that happens, your eyes shift back into white and you levitate for that one minute. You're in stasis for a minute. Okay? Yeah, so well, you are I have disadvantage on every ability check. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who really got the better fate? <laughs> Me. One more card shall be read. Uh... Ooh, let me shut down. Your fate lies here. I look him dead in his eyes, unless Kiki, you want to do. No, please, Karina. I, I look him dead in his eyes and I lean over real heavily. And I I do like one of these numbers right here and I pick the mm -hmm. one closest to you. Kiki's taking notes. This is, this is an amazing education for her. <laughs> you pulled the beast. Oh. Well, that's just rude. She's a bugbear. There's no Thank you. Yeah, that's just rude. You don't Thank have you, to. Thank you, Sister Rose. Thank you. Of course, you. anytime. Howling pain, hunger, hunger, hunger. A great evil will be released. And he kind of looks at you and smiles and says, "Tis fitting if you ask me. I think he's into you. I think I got it from here. And he, you see as he's as he sits there, he looks exhausted. I he think says, the I llama too. in this tent is into me. I don't know how to let it know that I am not into it. <laughs> I I immediately look for a llama in this room. <laughs> Just so You see you see Sister Rose, you see a llama in the corner. Like licking its lip. <laughs> This is a crime. I mean, oh. it is the most beautiful llama you have ever seen in your oh. life. Does it have I... on red pajamas? It's better. I, don't, I, think, I hope so. <laughs> uh, and with that, he says, you are dismissed. Go. I am now exhausted. These are your cards. This is your fate. Oh. And he dismisses you. All right. I, I take my lantern back on the way out. He, they hand it to you easily, Thank happily. You. And they, he, he bows, and you can make your way back to the Wizard of Wines. So as everyone starts to leave, Kiki, you grab your lantern yeah. and start to make your way out. Joy, is there something you want to do before um, before everyone leaves? Um, Joy? I would like to use it. To use it? To, oh, to yeah. use your, okay. Yeah, yeah. In the room, do you want to use it in the room or outside of this tent? Um. I want to look at the creepy marionette dude and say, hey, can I use this now? I think it's best if you use it on your own time. I am exhausted. I have no more energy for you and your ways. Be gone. 
but it's still my time if it's right now because all the time that I have is mine. That's not his nice. Voice, his voice beckons, and all of a sudden, you see people outside the tent start to pull up in the tent and see, like, it is time for you to go. Papa Maxim's done. Go, come, come, come. You're yeah, a really bad host. Karina, as you leave, he looks at you and says, you can stay. Yes. And as he does, yes. he unfurls his visage. It starts to peel back, and you see the withered man that was once outside Ooh. with not a scallop, but a shoulder blade, <laughs> out of place, and he says, you share my bed. Nope, I'm out. Let me, <laughs> share, let me lay with you, furry one. I'm share out. Share my bed. I, I go you know, like. hands are curled over with atrophy. It says, share my bed. Nope, You're let's go, guys. It's time to wrap it up. Let's go. It's just, <laughs> I am, I am just out of there. Like, hauling just all of it. All of it. Sister, I'm like you, waiting you for have, you. I'll grab you, you and llama, run you out. You have a llama following you. <laughs> Oh, I really wish that llama would go away, ladies. <laughs> it's making the most lewd gestures. I really don't like it. Um, and with that, that is the end of the night. Joy, do you want to do something? I mean, do you want to put on the mask? You have the ability to do that. It's a once per day magic item. Oh, once per day? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> so we're in Barovia. I yeah. want to put it on, and can I? You said I can go anywhere, right? This is magic. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you that, but I don't know what happens once you put it on. Mm. I would like to go to wherever our fathers are being held. So you put on the mask, and you say your magic uh, word, which is what is what is the command to activate the mask? Somebody stop me. <laughs> you say, somebody stop me. You dork. Do you do anything to protect yourself in this moment before you go through this process? Go through the process? No, what's the worst that could happen? Oh my God. Your eyes roll back in your head as you start to levitate. You feel your body rise up beyond your actual, you feel your spirit rise up beyond your actual body. And as you do, it's as if you've been on a roller coaster for all eternity because your mind, your body, and your stomach are like, they, they are a mess. And you can feel your atoms, your actual being start to pull apart. And before you appears, who appears before her, Sister Rose? What ghost appears before her? The ghost of, of one of the men that we saw fall at the vineyard. He was torn apart by vine creatures before our very eyes. But As I wouldn't you, know because I'm mad now. <laughs> you are mad. And there was no man in the vineyard during the battle. There is now. <laughs> there is now. And and sure enough, there is an there's a an, um there's a, a caretaker for the vineyard who when the gems were stolen because gems are the things that give the land the power to grow these vines. And when the gems were stolen, there was an old caretaker who tried to stop Baba Yasaga's minions from stealing the gems, and he was murdered. And as you call forth, you try to stop me, he appears in front of you and he's sweet. And as your body starts to separate, you immediately move into his sphere. And you are now one with this ghost. His name is Johan. And Johan, in your mind, says, the world is your oyster. Where do you choose to go? What do you choose to see? Um, so we're on a mission, and we're looking for our dads, and I'd really like to go and see where my dad is, is being held. And I think he's close to here, so you can take me there, yeah? So in a moment, in a moment, the movement you feel is like nothing that your human mind can, elf, elven mind can translate. You have in the tomes of, of your ancestors read of these sort of ethereal super highways that you're on, but nothing can, no, nothing, it's like nothing you've ever experienced. And as you fly through the land of Barovia, you appear in this ornate castle with an organ the size of nothing you've ever seen before. And at that organ, 
as you are dancing on the very notes of music itself, as you are wisping and wailing, and as you, you're caught up almost like a, uh, a balloon in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in a, an air current. You're being whipped around in this, the organ playing, da, 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 da. and you're, as the ghost is being thrown in this wind, you go down one of the tubes of the organ and up and out, and there sitting at the organ is your father just as you remember him, older, a little more hollow. But he plays a song, and as you appear in front of him, his breath is taken. And he immediately starts to cry, his eyes water. And in a moment's notice, he changes the music to the song he used to play you as a little girl. It's the first music you ever learned on your lute. And in a second, he can feel your presence. And behind him, slaps a hand. What are you doing, fool? Play my music. And as the ghost rises, you see the devil himself, Strahdvon Zerovich. And the ghost, Johan, starts to pull back. And you know it's time to go. And as you go back, you reach for your father, for Johan, you reach to touch him, and you're sucked back through the ethereal space. And as you land back in your body, you know your father is still alive in this land right now. And we'll take a break there. Great job. We're going to take a quick bio break. But before we do, I just want to say thank you again to our sponsors. Uh, first and foremost, I, and I forgot to say this at the top, Vorpal Board and um dwarven forge are uh i was very nervous at the beginning of the game i don't know if anyone realized that i could barely breathe but now i feel like i'm by myself again <laughs> um but uh, so i forgot to mention those two you guys uh what we have coming in the second half of this game is fantastic and we are right now using a uh, vorpal board which was on kickstarter last year and that's my second game with them they are incredible the game mechanics are great um the dice rolling mechanics fantastic so um, so thank you to them. I also want to say that um, uh, you should go to lostodysseyevents.com and don't forget that if you make a donation, Eldritch Foundry will, uh, for the next 24 hours, Eldritch Foundry, you'll get 30% off a custom mini, plus you'll get a free wolf or a flail, the founder mini, and 100% of those profits go to Extra Life. Extra Life is an amazing organization, and you should check out these messages from our sponsors, including Neverwinter, who has their Masquerade of Lairs event that's live right now. Our players can earn spooky Halloween themed items and the Jack O'Lair mask and the wandering scarecrow companion, which sounds amazing, right? Yeah. So join the yeah. party, be there, check out our sponsors. We wouldn't be here without them. Um, and you guys, that was awesome. I can't wait to see what happens yeah. next.
Become inspired by Sirenscape Online Player's massive sound library and weave your tabletop legends by building custom sound sets that bring your immersive world to life. Simply download the app to access the entire Sirenscape archive anytime you need epic sounds. The online player works perfectly alongside any virtual tabletop to bring your players together no matter where they are in the world. Broadcast your custom sound sets in real time with flawless audio quality to give them a game they'll never forget. Get the Sirenscape online player today at Siren. What is your wandering eye seek? Can I touch it? Take this miniature and I'm going to spray it with a matte varnish. Things that you've done in your career. Lucasfilm, Uncanny X-Men, X-Men Gold. Basically a column <laughs> of smoke where your wagon used to be. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are back. Uh, again, thank you to our sponsors. Um, and are you ready to roll? Yes. Everyone yes. good? Yeah. So yeah. after we left, um, the llama had crawled into bed with Sister Rose. <laughs> and they cuddled all night, which was lovely. Aww. And Joy had the opportunity to find her father yes. playing the organ in the far-off castle Ravenloft itself. Um, you wake up early in the morning. And there is a wagon waiting for you. And uh, Darwin Mardikoff says, please take this bear. First of all, it gives you a half a cask of wine. He's like, I know that you love the wine so much, so I give this to you. You can drink it yourself, or you can trade it for your life. And Barovia wine is everything. So oh, there is there no none left. No more wine, please. <laughs> all the wine. Never I, had I hear that if you, that you take a good berry, it fixes the uh, hangover, I, maybe. I heard that too. Up. It's just not true. Mm. He uh, he gives you a wagon, and he give, he rolls out his, the guy's, his sons, very handsome, um, roll out as he looks at you, his eyelids flick. Um, he rolls out and he puts a big barrel of wine onto this, this, um, this wagon's pulled by a mule, and he says, if you could do me a favor, if you could deliver this to the Blue Water Inn in Velaki, my son is there. I have not spoken to him in 20 years. It was on his watch that the, the gem was stolen. And last night, it reminded me we were so close to death. It reminded me that life is so important and that it is nothing without friends. It's nothing without your family. You have given me that gift. I want to say thank you to all of you. Does how, you could go ahead, go ahead, Karina? Oh sorry. no, I was just like, how old is he, and does he look like that? When I point out like the really cute one that yeah. fluttered out the he, window uh, earlier, he's a little older. He's got a wife and his children, but you are always welcome to come back. And oh. uh, I don't know, do whatever you do under the full moon. <laughs> what can Crazy I? Things I happen. In the land of Barovia. Hmm. But he says, um, he puts the gas on the thing. He says, if you could, uh, for me, give this to my son and tell him we are, hey, he's forgiven. And that I love him. He is always welcome back here. And now that the winery is all but dead, I have nothing to offer him other than my love. Um, and with that, you climb. Does anyone want to do anything before you get on the road? Uh, we'll go yes, ahead. right. Um, Mr. Man with the wine. Yes. Um, can I give you a hug? Nothing would make me happier. Yes. And he extends these huge arms. He's got a big beard. And he envelops you in a hug. And he holds it a long time. And you can see that The transference of love between two people is simple. In fact, it's one of the things we're missing in our lives right now. The easy, simple passage of, of, of a hug changes everyone's daily life. And for him, you can feel him start to get a little emotional. He covers it up, <clears throat> gives you a pat on the back and says, 
Thank you for my hug. I will remember this. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry I, that you missed your son. Yes. All right, go, go. I'm not crying. You cannot make me cry. <laughs> that uh, so I, I am proficient. Oh, so I am proficient in land vehicles. So I, I would like to attempt to drive this cart. I assume that there's a horse or a donkey or something. It's a, it's a mule. It's, yes, a, it's mule. a mule. Fantastic. Yeah. I, I know. Mr. Rose. Yeah, yeah. Before you give me that, All Sister right. Rhodes, your um, llama now start. What is Karina? What is the llama doing right now? Um, the llama is actually trying to get Sister Rose to ride it, versus mm. riding in the wagon. And how does he do? And how does the llama do that regrowth? So, how, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. I'm just, regrowth. How does how does the llama try to get Sister Rose? What is Sister Rose? You don't see the llama. No, obviously, I um, don't. But but what what is Sister Rose doing right now that that tells you she's trying to ride the llama? Um, I think Sister Rose, you're uh, what? How tall are you? Five ten. Five ten. Okay, so pretty, pretty, uh, pretty tall, pretty lanky lady, uh, and she is just very ably swinging her long leg mm -hmm. over an invisible space, and then <laughs> standing in that like bow-legged stance. Just, mm -hmm. but, but like from the neck up, pure nobility. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it works. She is on the llama, right? Oh yeah, it works. All right, good. All right, good. So, uh, Kiki, what was your role? Can well, you give me a, so a yes, it, uh, what kinds of a check is it for? If is it an intelligence check or a wisdom, probably? Pro oh, absolutely. All right. I also, but so I have an intuitive nature about land vehicles because I have, you know, ridden so many things in my life. So I get an extra d6 of intuition. Perfect. Great. Oh, that is pretty oh, 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 oh. You double the speed. Oh, you I realize did. you realize that one of the wheels ha the wheels aren't tight enough. The, the tighter they strong. are, the better they roll. Oh yeah. You gotta, so you gotta have you, tight wheels. I so I do kind of uh you know, like I jack up and I, I with my bare hands take the wheel off and uh, I'm able to quickly tighten up all the lug bolts uh and I'm able to make it go much faster. Beautiful. Sister Rose has taken off 10 minutes in front of you. <laughs> you come up behind her. She's riding along on the on the road. Um, <laughs> kind of galloping. Sister, you have such a beautiful imagination. That's what I love about you. Imagination? Um, I know not what you mean. <laughs> you make me laugh. She's such so, a cut up. So you're about... Um, 45 minutes into your ride. Can everyone give me a perception check, please? Yes. Holy oh, nice. oh, nice. Okay. Nice. Uh, 15 here. Okay, Joy. Oh, nice. Oh, everyone. Sister Rose, you see it first because you're out in front. You're double the speed. <laughs> you, you, Kiki has taken a stop to give, um, realize the, the mule hadn't been properly watered yet so you've stopped and to give the mule a little water yes sister rose it allows you to catch up to them and pass them just a little as they start and off to the side sister rose because of your hallucinatory state your senses are on fire and you see a small boy running across probably a hundred feet up through the woods and he crosses the road and he like wait like waves and like takes off into the woods on the other side what are you gonna do you all see that except everyone sees that is there something chasing him? You don't see anything chasing him right now. I follow him. As you take off after the, the, the child, and you can see, with your 18, you can see he's bleeding. That he's like, he looks kind of feral. Like his hair is kind of matted and, 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 and he's got like, cut, he had a cut across his face as he was crossing the road. You can see one side of his face was cut and his, his shirt is definitely ripped open and he's bleeding. And he kind of looked like he's limping. And he looks and he runs off in the woods. And as you r run after him, just as you, just about to get to the woods, you see three, um, what look like, I'll explain them and, and you can do with it what you wish. The hair is black as night and they're, it's almost as if they have no blood at all. They have shred of clothing on, and as they start to move through, you smell the stench of death. They have 
long fangs and they're barefoot. And they are hot on the trail of this young boy. What is everyone going to do? Well, I'm going to, yeah, I pull Kiga. up the mule for sure. And right. I stop it and I hop off immediately for my grave. Uh, and Sister I, Rose in the in the woods, full speed after. Are you going after her? Oh, I am. Yes. Good, Joy. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna follow. Great. Regrowth. What are you gonna do? Um, I I'd like to bring up the rear, and uh, if there's these three figures, um, I, I I'm eyeballing them. I want to keep I want to keep a, in a radius around the the rest of my sisters here, but. I'm eyeballing them and trying to figure out if they are indeed the vampires that we've been worried about. If, have we met vampires before? Do we know? You who have. They are? You, okay. you have. You have. You've had. I think three. In, how many encounters have you had with them, uh, Joy? How many encounters have you had with vampire spawn? None. Mm, so you were asleep when you encountered the vampire <laughs> spawn. This is fine. All three times you were taking a nap. Kiki, how many vampire spawn have you encountered? Uh, in my time, I've had three during this adventure, but I have met vampire spawn, or, spawn earlier in my life. Great. Uh, so yeah. can you give me a perception check? I can. Uh, actually, regrowth, you as well. Please give me a perception okay. check. Happy to. Uh, that Ooh. is a 17. Great, oh, seventeen oh, does it. These yeah. are indeed vampire spawn. All right. And you can see with the, with, it's raining, it's it's peeing rain, and the lightning strikes as they cross. The lightning strikes as they're going. They have no interest in you whatsoever. They don't even see you. They're bloodlust after this child. Hmm. Not gonna happen. I'm very very displeased with this. Um, as so Rico, soon... they are yeah. so they are vampire spawn. Okay. Can you, do you say do you say that out loud to let people know? Oh, sure. I'm like... Joy, you have no idea what it's like to fight a vampire spawn, but you, you think it's bad. Karina, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? What are you doing? We're, ju we're just going to leave the cart here in the road. I... <sighs> All right, I guess. Like, And I'll hop off and I'll just start stealth. Uh, I'll probably go stealth and just follow them. Great. Boom. You're off like a shot. As you're going through the woods, it's so dark. The sky is like, it's it, it's the rain and the clouds, it's dark. And as you start to move through, there's fog and you're lost. I need a track, I need somebody give me a track. Who's great at tracking? Everyone give me a tracking roll. Oh, I have an awesome at survival. Great. Yes. Give me that roll. Oh, don't worry Two, about no. it. I'm lost. 12, no. I'm Two, just following no. the group. <laughs> Sister Rose, you want to oh. give, me a give me a roll? What? I don't oh, think oh. a cock dice. Is, is that, that possible? Well, that 19. This road, because you're the first one in, you, you can, you can, you, you can't really see them. You can smell them. Your, your, your senses are so electric because you're I in a different smell place. Hennessy. You are in, you are dead on their, on their sense. I rolled a 20. It says in the thing, so. You rolled a 20. You know exactly where they are. I know exactly are. where they are. As you make your way through the fog, you come to an opening. And in this opening, there's like, like a, a, a thousand pumpkins. Oh my goodness. The, the, the actual opening is like two football fields in a round circle. And you find all these pumpkins. There's like pumpkins everywhere. And in the middle, there's like, sort of like a hole. There's like a, a big cave, almost like a, a cave in hole. And where are the vampires spawned? You don't see them. I don't see them, but I tracked them here. You had a great sense of where they went. Oh, man. And it took you to this area here. All right. Um, I'd like to carefully approach. Do I see Sister Rose? Do I see my, my ally? Yeah, they all compile. All right. Sister Rose is the first one there. She actually takes like five steps into the pumpkins and stops. All right. Uh, I would like to, to very slowly and stealthfully approach the hole. <gasps> okay. Wait. So you're all that you're all is where the pumpkins come crawling out of. I've heard them talking about it. You're probably <laughs> right. I, I have seen worse in my day. But can I can I cast speak with plants? Can I sure, talk, can I talk to the pumpkins? Sure. Okay. I do it. I cast speak with plants. So normally normally what happens when you cast speak with plants, what what usually happens? 
explain the spell to you. Um, okay, so usually I sit down, the way it happens, I cross, I sit down cross-legged in front of the plant that I want to have a chat with, and I, I take out, I have oh, two, no. two sides, like hand sides, and it's not meant to be a threat necessarily, but I do take out a side and I just start polishing it, and I'm like, so what's up, girl? You want to talk? So when you, you realize this since the moment you time you cast your magic, it comes out twisted. Something about this land, it works, but it doesn't ever appear like you think it should. Mm. As you do, as you start to speak to the pumpkins, your words come out backwards. Oh, no. Like you're playing Led Zeppelin backwards. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. And as the, as the pumpkin responds, it's also in reverse, but for some reason you can understand what it says. So it says, we are here. We are the watch. Yep. So as you speak, your words come out, you can hear your words and you're saying it in, in proper English and they come out backwards. Okay. And when the plant speaks, the words come out backwards as well. But you can now understand the backwards, like, and you understand when the plant says, we are the watch. And then you hear a thousand pumpkins echo, we are the watch. Uh, I turn, I turn and I'm, I'm translating like, like, uh, like Uhura or something. I'll be like, they're the watch. Hold on. I get, I'll get more. And I turn, I, I go back to the pumpkins and like, are there, you guys got vampires up in, up in here? What's going on? Vampires indeed, vampires indeed, vampires indeed, vampires indeed. Okay, uh, just one more question, just one more question. One more question. One more question. How, how can we sneak up on them? Quietly, quietly. Quietly, they said to do it quietly. All right, I'm going to sneak quietly. up on them. Tell them about the pumpernickel bread, Negro. Oh, uh, you cracked me up. The, I'll, I'll the join you, Kiki. Also speak please do. Oh, please do. <laughs> oh, please oh, buddy. Do. Buddy. So Sister, Rose, Sister Rose, you say, um, you say, tell her you like pumpernickel bread. And Regrowth passes that message along. And as she does, the pumpkins roll to the side as they, as they make a path of the way through. And you can see the pumpkin moves left, and then the pumpkin moves right, and then the pumpkin, and as you go by, you look down and you can see that you're avoiding the trap that's in the ground. Yes. As they start to guide you through this open pit that goes down in the ground. Let them pass, let them pass. Let them pass, let them pass. Thank you. Let this is pass. this is extremely chill of you. Thank you so much. We are chill. <laughs> see, I can talk. So you talk get to the too. front. You get so Kiki, you get to the front of this hole. And as you look down. You can see dirt on si on the side of, I should have made you make a perception roll. Like I said, I'm a new DM, sorry. But you look down and you see these mushrooms that are growing out. All these mushrooms, these myconoids are growing all the way down. They're luminescent. All right. And you can sort of see like dirt on several of them, of, on the myconoids. And, and uh, it's almost as if, yeah, the, that these things are like handles. Oh, like they're they're like it's, they're firm. Like if you, you poke it a little, you can, it's not moving. I turn back to regrowth and I say, uh, "It sounds like you're talking to the pumpkins. Um, ask them for me if if you you would please whether they've seen the boy go down. If they have, I'm going. I no one is allowed to hurt children. You got it." Hold on, Mom's there. Any, yeah, all right, any, any of y'all, any of y'all seen, seen a little kid, little, a little scared kid? Right, little kid, yes. All right. Little kid, yes. Little all right. Kid, yes. Then I nod. They all start. right. I immediately start to climb down. Okay. Sure enough, give me a, um, give me a dex check. It goes down about fifty feet. Give me a dex check. Like, could I do that acrobatically? <laughs> Absolutely. I could do. All right. So yes. Despite the fact that I'm quite muscled, uh, you can see that I have sort of a surprising limberness uh, within all of that. Um, 
Oh, that was very close. But it's all right. It's a 17. 17, yeah. Okay. You you see, she's sort of like, first of all, she rolls up her shorts that she always wears. <laughs> she's sort of like shimmies down I'm her socks. Very so proud she, of these thighs. I mean, she's got enormous, That's like beautiful, beautiful thighs, muscular yeah. thighs. And she sort of like, Me. she starts to like, like she, she gets on her stomach and kind of like flips over and starts to move her way down the side, never giving like her full back, but sort of like moving sideways down. Yep. It's pretty impressive. Nice. Uh, and she gets to the bottom. Anyone want to join her or are you going to stay up here? I'll join. I'll join. All right, everyone give me, a, everyone is going down, give me a dex roll. Oh, come on. Oh, come oh, on. Boy. Oh, come Mine's, on. Mine's oh, a 10, so we're coming in hot, that baby. Okay. Okay. Drop him down. Seven. You have a seven? Yeah, seven. Okay. On your way down, you um, slip and fall. You are 20 feet from the bottom. Give me a dex check to make sure you don't knock off the person underneath you, who is Sister, Ro Sister Rose. You are who is a disadvantage? <laughs> Oh, Some of the disadvantage. Joy, I need you to re-roll, please. No, not no. Who's at disadvantage Sister, for Sister Rose? Sister Rose, I, Rose. I, I, it is I. For the hallucination. I am, oh, yeah. I am mad, but I also have not gone down into the hole. She hasn't I've gone in yet. My dex check. Okay. So when you roll a dex check, don't you forget about that ability. <laughs> don't you forget about that disadvantage, girl. Yes, yes. Okay. I, so, yeah. uh, Kate, uh, so Sister Rose, one, one sec. As you see um, regrowth go down, mm -hmm. she starts to fall and she hits Joy. Joy, give me a deck save. Oh, oh, it's, so, it's so good. Joy, as you go down, you grab regrowth and stop her plummeting down. Because technically it's Sister a 24. Nice. Sister I, Rose, what are you going to do? Uh, you see, ladies, I. I don't know how to bring the llama down. Jump. We got and there you. is the matter of the pumpernickel bread as well. Um So I, you've all left a tripping sister rose at the top of have, this hole. We are unaware not, of her tripping. Not the first time, probably. And as you get to the bottom, you see her negotiating with the llama. And and you and when you're on the ground, you see this passage that goes down about fifty feet and ends in what looks to be sort of a large cavern. All right. I pull my glaive out. I lean towards Regrowth and I say, "I'm starting to worry about Sister Rose. We should check into that once we rescue this child." Uh, yeah. And then I I'm going to start to move down the way. I'm happy to take the front, and the glaive is just ready. Ready to go. Come now, up. how dark is the phosphorescence is helping me see? Yeah, in All the right. first 50 feet, you're sort of like stumbling a little. Sure. But I mean, because the light is so bad up top, your eyes are sort of adjusted already right. and you start to make your way through. I'm sorry, um, I'm a human. It's it's a weakness. Yeah, it's it is what it is. It is oh, what who it else is. is doing who's going next? Um I'm trying to talk Sister Rose into throwing the llama to me. I, I and what just, does that sound like, Karina? Um a, a sister, just throw the llama down, and I'll, I'll save the llama. And I and I also turn to regrowth, like I don't know what's happening right now. There's no llama, but yeah, just come on down, girl. Okay. Okay. I got you. Llama right, first, Lillian. then you. Go into the hole. Okay, <laughs> Lillian's coming. Catch her. Uh, I got her. Lil Lillian, okay. safe. Okay. All right. Now, now your turn. Okay. And I just step off the ledge. <laughs> no. Right. I'm no going to yeah, catch her. Yeah. yeah, of course. Obviously. Like I mean, I'm it's fifty the feet. Plank. It's fifty feet. Like it, you. I mean, it's you can fly because your mind tells you you can. <laughs> give me a. Give me a. <laughs> give me. De give me a deck save. Try to roll with it as as reality hits you on the ground. Yeah, oh, oh nice. you fall. You fall and you take. Oh no, um, I was catching her, Matt. <laughs> uh, I was catching. Uh, I was waiting to catch her. The llama. Yeah, you I are, the You are prepared. You are prepared. She is falling the best way she possibly can. Karina, if you fail this check, you will take damage. All right. So give a bit. Uh, oh, you. You. Seventeen. Okay. Great. You catch her. <laughs> 
You both take five damage. Oh. You just drop 50 feet, five oh, damage. Oh wait, I'm supposed to be at disadvantage. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's right. Well, thank you. Where's thank you, Sister Rose. So is that a dex by chance? <laughs> um, it's not as good, so you take seven damage. Well, Karina. Is, is it a dex check? You, yours would be strength. Okay. Never mind. How? Okay, good. Uh, so you guys have damage, and we move through. Who who goes next? Who's after Kiki? Kiki's down at the end of the tunnel oh, yeah. looking in his great cavern. Well, I'm, I'm going to go fish. next. I'm gonna fish out a couple of good berries and give it to Sister Rose and Karina. Oh, you get a hit point back. Oh, thank you. What a delicious oh. lady bug. Forward into the breach. Good for hangovers. <laughs> okay, so Sister Sister Rose eats the ladybug, uh, and you all get to the end of the cavern, um, or at the end of this long 50-foot passage, and you come into an unbelievable Dwarven Forge belt. I mean, an unbelievable. <laughs> oh um, wow. This, what does that as look you can like? you see in the foreground, uh, there are heroes. The llama is just out of the picture. Um, but what you see in front of you are is is this unbelievable cavernous ca- myconoid cavern that is as beautiful as you i mean you see it right there i mean what you see is what you get these these um these great cage mushrooms are glowing and shiny and underneath you can see as i use my you see these right here mm-hmm. those look like mycon like small myconoid people or figures and they all seem to be moving in syncopation hmm. back and forth um these are there's a, a this lake right here um there's a lake right here as it goes around the small island and that it sort of like bubbles and every time it bubbles like it smells like it sort of smells like roses every time it bubbles it's like this unbelievable like what you would expect to be dank and sort of um uh in your nostrils and heavy is effort i mean it's 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 light and it's beautiful. It smells like a thousand roses in this cavern, even though it's, you know, it's a bunch of crazy mushrooms. And then far off in the distance here, um, you can see what looks to be, um, there's light emanating from behind this piece here. And then right up in here seems to be the body of a small boy. Oh no. What are you gonna do, sister? Can yeah. can you detect the goods and the evils? Everything here is good. It smells amazing. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, with, with your divine ability, sister. My divine you... ability says it smells amazing. <laughs> oh, buddy. I, sister I... Rose, sister Rose is kind of like rubbing her cheek against the rock next to you. Mmm. <laughs> I, I turn, I turn to regrowth and be like, something's off. Yeah, we should address this probably in yeah, um, some future adventure. Uh, ooh, buddy. Uh, <laughs> so are we killing the mushroom the people? The myconoids shift back and forth and are kind of humming. Hum, lale, 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 hum, lale. I feel like I would know something about myconids being I, a druid yeah. and all. Great. Give me a, uh, give me a perception check, please. Okay. Or give me give me a nature check. Sorry. Ooh, oh, that's nice. Even better. Sure yeah, enough. that's Whatever a twenty-two nature. Yeah. Um, they are people th- that you've heard legend told. Um, that your father used to actually tell you this really charming little a bedtime story about the little people of Mushroomville, and he would tell you these stories about these little mushroom people that would try to do good in the world in their own special way. And that they worked as a community and they people never saw them. They were like Christmas elves. They never saw them, but they're always doing good. And you can see that as you sort of like check them out, they're sort of everything your fantasy tells you they would be. And they're underneath that mushroom, your role was so high that nature checked mm-hmm. that you know. Even though mushroom, these mushroom people seem to be full of joy, 
that there are mushrooms that possess, I know this might be shocking to you, that light starts to gleam from the from the door from behind. The light starts to pulsate. So you realize that that mushrooms um that a lot of times they 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 give off hallucinatory um sort of effects. Mm, okay. You come within range of them. That there is a that there is an element of mushrooms that if you get too close to them, their defense mechanism is to poison you with like hallucinations. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I great role. Thanks. Great role. Thanks very much. Um I um I hold I sort of hold Karina back a bit and and say, uh those those ones those ones are no threat. Don't go near them. Then uh, mm. Okay. Oh. Joy? We're have to find another way. Joy, what do you think we should do, buddy? You, these seem like your type of folk. Uh, very joyful and fun. Hi. Hi, hi, Joy. The mu- the mushroom people. We. What should we? Uh, got any ideas on how to get around? Cause we gotta go through them sort of unless we're going swimming I can't talk to plants but I can try to talk to plants and say excuse me very loudly can we just come through here we're trying to get to a very important mission and we've got a lot of things that we need to do so joy starts to scream and echoes throughout this cavern excuse me excuse me excuse me excuse me and you hear from this rock over here, that is a great shot of what you have in front of you. And from this, this rock, you can see right here that there is a, a small boy he's standing there, but he's actually on the rock and he starts to cry. Oh, he hears your no. voice, excuse me, excuse me. And your boy starts to cry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he's crying on the other side of the room. I, I take a quick scan to see if I can, can pick out any of these vampire spawn. Yeah, give me a percep. Give me a give me a spot check. Perception is that a- perception? Okay. Yeah, yeah uh, you don't see anything. Ten, you look ten. around and this feels bright because right. of this angle. But just like a, a feedback, um, just know that it's way darker and it's it's pulsating sure. light. The only light illuminating are these these mushrooms as they glow and ebb and flow. So it's almost like this distant strobe effect all, right. all through this area. Oh. I can't ignore that, so um, I'm just gonna start on this. Uh, I can't I can show you, right? Um, yeah, that's the point of the whole so, thing. It's great. So uh, on this track, I think is the, the the shortest route to get to the young boy. Um, but we can't go near those mushroom people. This, Regrowth said it's not why? safe to go this by one them. Is a one? I I think so, I I think we go here. We hop jump. here hop here and then we're there anyway I karina you're a genius and i'm gonna go and i'm gonna try to jump onto that first island great give me a um so take your move action yes. which i think will put you right about here and then give me a uh, a jump check to there uh is that just athletics yep uh that is a six plus eight so 14. Whoa. you make it it's it, you you sort of slip i mean these yes. all it, it's 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 even though it smells beautiful, it's still a dank cave, sure. right? It's this very strange um, dichotomy. So you grab and you grab hold, yep. and you make it to the other side. Yep. Cool. I'm gonna follow Kiki. Great. So give me a uh, take a move action, and then take give me a, uh, a a dex check. Yeah. Can I do it stealth, like hide in shadows, ish? Sure. Yeah. I mean, Kiki kind of like do- correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. Kiki, but. Are you moving silently? What what is yeah, your sort of I'm, what is happening? Like I said, I'm I'm Actually, pretty light on my feet things? despite my my stockiness. Uh, so yeah, I I'm being careful about it. I wasn't essentially trying to be sneaky, uh, but I wasn't trying to I wasn't being uh, blasé about it either. That's a very big word, okay. blah, very very fun word to use. So. Um, okay, okay, so you guys, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to um, roll a niche. Okay. 
Okay. So, um, Kiki, you get over to the other side. Um, and then we're going to go. So, Joy, what do you want to do next? So, can we put Kiki here, please? <laughs> Kiki, actually, why don't I'm you right show? Here. Yes. Yeah, right here, perfect. Please. Thank you. I just, you know, I, or even here, I just, just jumped to the edge of the island. That's London. It's late. It's late in New York. They could be, he could be asleep. Oh, nice. Oh, very nice. Ooh, yeah. Nice angle. So, yeah. Well oh, I see Kiki over here. That's fine. I accept nice. that. I'm, I'm trying to scope out to try and jump over here when I get a chance. Okay, good. All right. Um, and then next is uh, Sister Rose. What do you do? What are you going to do? I'm just gonna walk right up through the middle here. Yeah, give me a um, as you uh, as you do that. Mm -hmm. um, can you please give me a con save going for high Hadley. or or not or yeah. not? Uh, that's a nine. Yeah, you don't make it. <laughs> um, Okay, you don't make it, which means that you start to hallucinate, and for a second, you choose to take a seat next to the Mykonoids next to you, and sort of join in their melding, and sure enough, as soon as you sit down, um, regrowth, what what happens when she shares that circle with the, the Mykonoids? What, what happens, what happened in the fairy tale your dad used to tell you? He always warned us not to go near myconids that appear to be in that swaying hive mind because that's how you know they're having like a collective hallucination, which mm -hmm. is basically just like a, it's a very private, usually myconid only type of situation. And our more mortal, more, uh, you know, humanoid minds have a real hard time processing all of that hive, hive mind information. So as Sister Rose joins this, She's assaulted by all of these senses of, of things, uh, of the past, the future, the present, the lives of these myconids. Uh, they're, maybe they're ravaged by the, the fear and the, the, um, the, the domination of these vampire thralls that are plaguing the land. So there's fear, there's fear in them in a, in a genetic level. And, and you can feel the history of that fear and, and you, you're experiencing all the, all the generations of this Mykonid family. As, you, as this all comes true and what Regrowth says, you, you lock into their spirit. Mm. And as you start to commune with them and you, and, and you start to go through what Regrowth says, you hear this voice in your mind and it says, I am the great king. You are trespassing. What in this in your mind? What what needs you be here? Speak now, child. Speak now. We come to remove a interloper, a young child who is injured. He is innocent. We seek only to aid him, and then we will leave your lands unmarred. I can feel your truth, child. I can feel your truth. Know that they hide. The child is but a distraction. And he shows you in your mind's eye the location of three vampire spawn. They are here. Over here, which you can't see. They're right up, thank you. They're, one is here, one is here, and one is back here. They lay in wait. That is the gift of the great cage. I think. Do your bidding. And he lets me. And go. he gives you clarity. Whoa. Your hallucination is over. Yes. For as long as you are in the presence of the great cage. Wow. And you have clarity. All right. Um, Karina, what are you going to do? Uh, well, I see Sister Rose has sat down and joined the collective over there, and I'm just like, mm, I don't, I don't know if I should go save her. I don't know if we should save this kid. I'm just very torn uh, what I want to do right now, but I feel like Rose is in the most immediate <laughs> danger right now because I don't know what the mushroom folk are doing to her. So I'm going to... Yeah, so to that, Karina, give me a perception check, please. Cool. 
Uh, that would be a 24. She looks happy and as safe as possible. She couldn't be happier. And the Mikeanoid kind of reaches over and scratches her back. <laughs> oh, we really got to figure out what's going on with her. And so I, I guess she's okay. And like Regrowth told me earlier that, you know, they're fine. They mean us no harm. So I'm just going to assume that that stands uh, here. So I guess I'm going to stealth uh, hide in shadows, but follow um, Kiki. Great. Mama give me Kiki. A, give me a, give me a uh, did you already make that dex check? Uh, I'm, yeah, I made the sense. check already. It was a 28. But... Wait, give me a stealth check, please. Uh, oh, you, as you kind of do, 12. You, you jump. Yeah, oh. you, you, um, you sort of stumble and you make a, lo a lot more noise than you expect. Mm. You, you do the check, no problem. You're safe, but you you sort of squeal out. You're like one of your eyes is focused on Sister Rose, and you kind of like ah, and you know. Yeah. There you go. All right, uh, you are up, Regan. What are you gonna do? Um, I'm going to bypass all this by wild shaping into a giant bat. <laughs> Great. Okay. You shape. What does it look like? Mm, it's a it's a very cute, almost like a flying fox. If you've ever seen those, it's, sure. it's oh, they're adorable. Cute, super I love cute them. Little face, little big eye, big Pixar eyes, and just a little hint of the tiefling horns coming out. Sure. But that, other than that, a terrifying giant bat. Just just right. Right. normally, normally, what happens is that you shape shift in this great. But what happens in the road? And as you start to shift, your body collapses to the ground and you start to convulse and you start to shake uncontrollably. And as you are changing, you're, it, it's painful. You're racked with pain as your, your wing comes, your wing comes, and your head starts to twirl around as your ears pop and you turn into a bat. And you almost, like every single time you shape shift, you have this experience and you know it's coming, so you're prepared for it. But the first time, it almost killed you. But you are now a bat. What uh, is that a is that a move action or is that is that an it's, action? That's a, a whole action, yeah. And so I, I can I can I think I can move now that I've done it. Right. Where do you want to move to? Well, I got a flight speed of sixty feet. I want to say yeah, sixty feet. So I right. want to get as close to this kid in a sixty foot movement as I can. At the top of the round, the boy falls over the side and starts to crawl his way uh, towards um, towards this bridge. Oh, I, I'm pointing at it like I'm an idiot. I'm like, I'm literally pointing at my screen. <laughs> <laughs> the boy falls and he crawls over like right in here, London. Oh, nice. Okay, and he's crying, please help me, please help me. All right, top of the round. Joy, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna ask you if I can see the vampires. You hear the echo of, child, of the child screaming and crying in the hall. You don't. You have no idea about vampires. You don't see them. And you can give me a perception check. Uh, you don't see. You don't really see anything. You're. You're like. There's so many lights. And just imagine, like every time, like you see something, you, your eyes blink, and they're like five feet away. I mean, it's like everything is moving in strobe. It's like a horror movie. Yeah. So what I would like to do in this moment is I would like to use Dimension Door. Yes. And get over to that side. You got it. Is that a move action? Uh, it's an instantaneous action? action. It's an instantaneous right. full action. One action. Good. And does it put you right to the boy? Where do you want to go? Well, it takes me 500 your... feet, so I'm going to have yeah. it take me like right to him. Yeah, use your clicker and let us know where you want to be. You are up, Kiki. Clicker. Hey, you guys, everyone knows where you're at, right? Who you follow. This, you this, go, Joy. Mm -hmm. ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, I'm going to give everyone their initial so that you know where, who you follow. So it goes Joy to Kiki to Sister Rose to Karina to Regenerate or Regrowth. Sorry. Okay? Coming back. So just, if you could be ready to go, help us on the action. All right. Keep your ear up. What are you going to do? All right. Um, when I see uh, Joy uh, sort of, you know, walk through her dimension door over by the, the young boy who has now rolled off the place that I was heading to, uh, I get very nervous because 
I have a special feeling for Joy uh, and, and her innocence. Um, so I turn on the spot. Uh, I grab Karina's arm and I say, do you trust me? Karina. Yes. All right. I spin on the spot. I teleport both of us right next to the young boy and Joy. <gasps> great. Great move. Um, let's see. All right. That's my bonus. Uh, as I'm there... Um, Kiki, as you yeah. land, the boy looks at you. He's like, finally, we took you so long. And as he does, his eyes turn to slits. Ooh. And his mouth becomes a maw. And his hand starts to change into a claw. Right. But what you have before you is a boy werewolf. Oh, he yes. reaches out to attack. Oh, no. Don't hurt oh. him. You said to trust you, you bring me in the middle of this. <laughs> and his, it's like the he man does, werewolf from London. And his mouth opens, and he reaches out to bite your face. All right, oh, man. Oh! Oh, what'd you get? He hit. All right. Take. <laughs> he rolled a 19. Hold on. Yeah, I'm sure. Yes, he hit me. <laughs> um, So at Beetle and Grimm's, which is the company. Oh, boy. Here we go. Welcome to Beetle and Grim Hour. <laughs> um, stand by! Stand by! Plug it! <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. At Beetle and Grim, we have these things called encounter cards, which are great for combat. On the front is the, the art of the creature you're fighting, and on the back is all the stats. So I am actually going to use something in-game that we produce. So he attacks, take... Um, he reached out to bite you. Right. Take um, eight damage. Eight. All right. Yep. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, six damage. Six damage. All right. Yep. Um, uh, and he has he has a multi attack. So okay. Attacks again. Misses horribly. Okay. And he um, says, "Why took you so long?" All right. So I'm I'm mid turn. Uh, so I, I that was my bonus. So within this, um, Kiki. Yes. From behind you. Yes. You see pop out. Three vampire spawn. All right. From here, from here, and from here. I'm gonna see this. Hold on. And they attack, but they are they are one round away. All right. So it's your action. Okay. Sorry, things are crazy. Sorry, things are I, I, sorry I jumped all over your action. It's okay. It's crazy things are happening in my screen. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, yes. So I get there. He bites me uh, as I come down to try to help him. Um, I look at Karina and I, I shrug. Um, how was I to know? Uh, <laughs> but, he's, but he knows. He knows not what he does. Uh, we, we were all young and, and going through things. Um, so I let him. I let him bite me. I don't. Uh, uh, you know, I don't. I don't let him hold on. But um, I'm actually. I'm going to try and protect him. So I'm going to see how far away is that uh, the vampire coming towards me? They are. You can see there. There's one, uh, can we back, hey London, can we back this one up? Okay. They've just appeared. So okay. I want to, so I want to give them a full round of, um, of full round before they get there. So okay. just back this one up a little, yeah. Um, and sorry, Kiki, as he bites you, yes. you feel yes. his, his maw starts to, to, to rip through you and you can yes. feel his saliva start to course through your arm. So give me a con save. Con save, all right. Eat to 12. All right. I'm pretty good at this. Um, that is exactly a 12 plus 5. You you got what you need. Yes. All right. Uh, so I feel it's kind of getting me. Uh, I think what I would like to do while I wait for these guys to get a little bit closer, um, I'd actually like to try and um, sort of flip around and, and get my giant thighs around his neck and sort of hold him down so he can't bite or go. I, you know, I'd like to kind of grapple him with my ginormous, beautiful, meaty thighs. I have never in combat heard anyone attack with only their thighs. Only my thighs. I don't know. I love that, it. You know, anything you want, athletics or something. I don't know. No, yeah, give me a, uh, give me a grapple check. Give me whichever's okay. highest for you. Yeah. I feel like you do this a lot, so go for it. Totally. I'm really good at this. Yeah, nice. 17 plus 8. Or 16 yeah, plus you, 8? 24. You, um, hold on a sec. 
Yeah, he fails miserably. He's right. like, he can't believe he has your thighs around his head. So yeah, so I'm essentially going to try and hold his face down so that he can't bite anybody else. Uh, okay. Keep him grappled with my legs. I understand, uh, well, I don't know, I have to re-look up grapple rules, but uh, it might just mean he can't move. It might mean he can still attack. Yeah, if you, yeah, he can't move. Um, but his arms aren't pinned. Okay. Correct? So he, just no, gone, I'm just, just trying gone. to keep his head. Pinned. Yeah, you, you're, you're you, between your thighs. You, you've closed his mouth, right? right? You've like you're pushing your pelvis and oh, closing okay. his mouth. Fabulous. All right. All right. Very good. I'm good. Um, all right. That is the end of your round, sister. You're up, sister Rose. I will move towards them, but before I do, I tell the great page, "Oh no, great Mike and Eric, they've fallen for the trap," and then I start to move. I, I think it might take me my whole movement to get to that. Oh um, you feel as you're coming out of the hallucination, mm -hmm. he feels the goodness in you, and he doubles your speed. Nice. Uh, I guess like, when he says, on. he says, um, go with speed. And he mm -hmm. doubles your speed. And as I reach where the others are, I, uh, with my bonus action, reach out to Kiki and say, the great cage is with us. Stand strong and give her my shield of faith. Nice. I'm giving her a plus two bonus to her AC for oh. the next 10 minutes. Oh, wow. Nice. nice. Well done. I love it. And then, uh, I don't think there's anything close enough um, for me to attack. No, you can ready your attack. I mean, you, you see them coming. <laughs> is there anything you want to do? I mean, we, um, here's the thing. I, I, I believe that you guys, uh, in, look, if we had played for six months to get us to seventh level or a year, you would have tactics here. You would have the ability to like sort of know what you guys are going to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you exactly one minute to sort of organize your thoughts towards this combat section. So you have one minute to discuss out loud Ooh. what your history is in these moments. Ready? Awesome. Uh, all right. Um, our Y'all know that I can do all kinds of fire. Anything, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm, I'm like ready to go. I'm in bat form right now, but you can you can almost feel the like the heat that's building in my little feathery wings. And so the moment I get a chance, you know, oh man, regrowth is just gonna plop some fire on these fools. So that's that's what you know about me. I'm going last in the order. Um. um 30 seconds. I will probably end up double teaming with Kiki right here because I get yeah. advantage, which means that I get the sneak attack, which means that I'm really going to mess this thing up and bathe in its blood. Not really, but maybe it Next. might be fun. So <laughs> I'm team. most likely going to try to intercept this one up here. That way Kiki has less to deal with since I've right. got my chain mail and my faith to shield me. Joy. I'm gonna take off my circlet and use my scorching ray that's hidden inside of it and my circlet of blasting and I'm gonna use it because it goes within 120 feet Time's and then up. I'll have three pills. Time's up, Karina, you're up, what are you gonna do? Uh, so I'm gonna use my bonus action to cast Shadow Blade. Great. Uh, so a blade will appear- for the players with... at, for, Yeah, for the players at home, what, is, what does it do? Uh, oh. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can I back up, please? I apologize. Sister Rose, when you give that shield of faith, it what normally happens, what does it normally happen when you cast that spell? Normally, it's like a golden soothing light. That they yeah, have. it's not okay. that. It's this green, it, it, like, it's, it's, it's yuck. It's puke that comes out and sort of envelops Kiki. And as it hits her, it sort of like stings like a thousand bee stings, but it still gives her the plus two. All right. All right. Karina, you're up. Sorry, I didn't interrupt. Uh, I'm going to cast Shadow Blade, which basically weaves together threads of shadow to create a sword solidified in gloom. Uh, it does. Karina, your spell comes off perfectly. <laughs> in the land of, course of Barovia, it does. there's not a. Not, it, it actually it, it shines a little darker. It's like a little more voidish. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So I'm going to put this in the form of a rapier. Um, and since that we are kind of flanking the werewolf, we're gonna go ahead and hit him with the good stuff right there. Um, so I should yeah, get sneak werewolf. attack on that. Because right. it's magical, baby. So, um, here comes the d20s. Hit. Oh, hit. 
Do your damage. Oh, Do no. damage, baby. One, two, and then we Keaton, got. Did you see her hit the first time? Are you all right with that? Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I am sort of, you know, waving my hands and saying, I don't think we should hurt the boy, but all right. You hit him to do your damage the first one? Uh, first one, and then, sorry, I'm making sure I got all the right dice. Is this the first round? Oh, it's not a sneak attack, is it? So, sorry, no, yeah, surprise attack. because she's in combat. I'm, I'm no, in combat. I mean, like, he knows I'm there, so it's not a surprise attack, correct? Well, sneak and... You can get sneak, I think, because of an ally okay. also. Allies within five okay, feet. so, so then we're going to do an extra, oh, sorry. 3d6? Uh, 2d6. Copy that. So 17 plus... Oh, 8 20. plus 5. So 30 damage. Oh, 30 Boy damage. Drops. And so... Boy drops. <laughs> oh my god. And so, like, when when I come through with this, like, shadow blade, like, the blood spurts everywhere, and I'm like, ah! Like, all over the place. And so, <laughs> I'm like... Like just like enjoying like this way more than I probably should. Karina, not only that, but as you see the lycanthropy pass, something inside of you stirs. In your heart, where you usually would go bloodthirsty and celebrate this moment of victory as a woman who has dominated for years, something inside of you, your heart starts to slow down. As if you've killed one of your own. <laughs> Papa Maximus. No. He didn't say anything to you. Yet you feel in your body this need to come out. Give me a con save going for high. Fifteen. You feel your mouth wants to split in two and a snout come out, but you hold it at bay tonight. Next up. Rege regrowth, you're up. I keep on saying regenerate. I like it. Call me Jenny. Um so I'm I'm gonna Jenny from the block. I, I'm gonna fly into the face of this vampire spawn right right here. I'm gonna flap my gross dusty wings at him. Um, but then uh, at the end of that turn, I'll drop out of um, bat form. I don't know if that's a okay. action. Or I can do that as a bonus action. Okay, so as a bonus action, I drop and uh, as my, oh and, yeah, it's a bonus action too. Um, I'm going to take out my flame tongue sword I have to use a bonus action to ignite it uh, to be flamey. Um, however, I am going to, uh, rather than just straight up attack, I've got my my sword pulled back and I cast Moonbeam onto this vampire spawn. What does it look like when you cast Moonbeam? Usually, it's a silvery beam of pale light. What are you gonna? What are you I'll, gonna I'll do to my movie? I'll give it to you. In the land of Barovia, it okay. shines twice as bright. Nice. <laughs> okay, so it's a, a five-foot radius. When the creature enters the spell, there they have to take a con throw, make a con saving throw. Um, it misses on, both five. When you're when you start your turn there, so okay. it doesn't have any effect yet until that. Okay. Great. Um, they're up. The werewolf's dead. The zombie or the uh, the vampire spawn ably move towards you and engage in combat. So they take the move action and they attack. London, you are in charge of choosing who I attack. They they creep forward and they attack Sister Rose. Nice, London. Well done. What about the other two? Oh, come on over here to Mama. Oh, come on over. That? That's Joy. Is that who it attacks? Joy? London doesn't like you. Oh, and then, and then it attacks Regrowth. All right. All three attacks. Ready? Against Joy. Miss. With the second attack, hit. Take. Um, eight damage. The bite uh, on, uh, on uh, Sister Rose, the hit. 
and a oh a miss take stand by stand by six damage that was on sister rose and then they attack um with a natural one going to save for dex they make it nothing happens he sort of stumbles as you fall in front of him and the light sort of beams down on him he goes to reach and hit you and, and misses with the natural one on his first attack and like it, it is cowering in the second attack Excellent. top of the round joy you're up what you like do? 2d10 radiant damage for that bad boy by the way. ow that hurts Really sucks to be him. You want, you want to um, you want to roll that for me? Yeah. Two D ten. Yum yum. Here we go. Thir- 12, 12 points of damage. Copy that. Uh, you are up. What do you do, Joy? A vampire right in front of you, trying to eat your face. <laughs> As I said, at that moment, I'm gonna take my circlet and I'm gonna throw it up. And it's going to turn into three scorching rays, and I'm going to oh. use each of those to attack each of the vampires, and that's going to be three rolls to do so. So let's go first range attack. Oh, uh, uh, all right. Four. Six. Then we've got a sixteen plus three, something it's a nineteen. Hits. First one hits. The second one hits. And then thirteen. Third one hits. Okay, so who, who has the first one? The one against who? Who missed? Uh, not the one in my face, obviously. Yeah. So, okay. um, that's gonna yeah. be one that's off to this other side of me. Wherever you are, little you guy. You have to choose. You have to choose which one is going to not get the bonus. Uh, obviously the bonus goes to the dude that's in my face, like, trying to attack me. So that is yeah. the 16 plus three. And then the other is going to go, where you at, little weird man? Um, all right, to the vampire, whatever. The other two are going to the vampire's closest to me. Uh, 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 yeah, that one. Put your finger back there, mister. I'm going to throw damage at you guys. No, do your cursor. That's the one you want? Yeah. Okay, so that one gets, so um, Kate, regrowth, in the next round, because of this communal attack, you get advantage on the next attack. Because it doesn't see the second ray coming in, and so he's now like being hit by two rays. <laughs> so you can advantage on your next attack. Okay. All right, and it's two um, D6 damage. Uh, yeah, roll roll me the damage, please. All right, so that's one. So seven points of damage for the one that hit. And Wait, what? the two hit or the one hit? Two hits. Uh, two hits, and they both get seven. All right, you are up, Kiki. What are you going to do? All right. Um, I have a dead child werewolf between my thighs. Um, In this moment, yes. as you look down, his form starts to shift. Oh, this is horrible. Shift back. Um, a young boy. Is he? And as you, you see in front of him, like a sweet, innocent child who was sick with the cancer. Right. Is he dead or dying? Can um, I tell? It, uh, give me a perception check. Do you have any proficiency in health at all? No, none. Mm. I won't roll know. Roll a disadvantage. Okay, roll it. a disadvantage. I mean, it's combat. You've got like, yeah, 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 yeah. around you and you're like, you could, you could take around and find out. No, I don't know that I can do that. Um, uh, I use my movement, because I'm 10 feet away from the one that's attacking Joy, correct? I'm within 10 feet. Yes, correct. Great. So I use my movement to sort of gently place him, maybe like underneath a little overhang or something on the side of the, so he's a little sure, bit. I'll give that to you. On the other yeah. side right here, on the other side of this little thing, you can scoop him up and sort of put him in this corner. So yeah, just so that no one will step on him or something. He's a little bit protected. Uh, and okay. then I just unleash my glaive on the vampire spawn. Okay, he, as, you, as you lift the, lo- the little boy up, yes. the, the vampire in front of you takes an attack of opportunity. Hitting. I didn't, did, I, did I have to leave his? Yeah, you're in his like five foot threat range and you're, you're picking it up. I thought I was 10 feet from him. No, aren't you? He's right there. Oh, okay. I thought I was 10 feet from him. All right, well, no, I- No, you, you're right there. Where, London, where was she? <laughs> No worries, it's really hard to see. Uh, so yeah, if I'm five feet from him, I'm still gonna do it, so I'll take the offer. Okay. He, he d- it takes the attack of opportunity, or seven damage. Seven damage. Did he hit? 
Yeah, did he hit? Face. What's his uh ooh, attack? Ooh. What's your armor class? 18 now. <laughs> he because of the the bee sting of uh, plus two, he misses. <laughs> All right. Do not take that damage. So well I, done, Sister Rose. Yes, I roll away from him, uh, narrowly avoiding his, his head as he reaches out. I cradle the boy, place him in this little space, and I turn back to him. Now, I only need to come within 10 feet of him to hit him. Um, so, uh, yes, he's going to take three attacks. All to his very mean face. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, two. Uh, sorry, I don't, I don't know how this works. All right, so that was the six uh, plus five is an 11. Sorry, six Miss. plus seven is uh, 13. Miss. Okay, then a 17 plus, uh, sorry, plus eight. Hits. Is it 14 hit? No. No, all right, so the second one hit. The third one oh. uh, misses, which is awful. Give me uh, a roll, roll a deck save going for high. Uh, Alright, nothing happens. Okay. Um, do your damage on the one hit. So the one hit, it was my second uh, yeah. hit, alright? So. That's the, the, not the glaive, that's the butt, right? No, I do the butt lap. Well, no, it is, it's the first, so it's the butt. Um, so hold on. Sister Rose, you're up next. It's gonna be a five plus five, so ten bludgeoning damage with the butt. So, nice. as I okay. place him inside, I move just within 10 feet. The glaive swipes up, misses him, but the butt comes around from back and gets him right up under the chin. Uh, <clears> if he were full of blood, he would see blood first, but of course he's not. Uh, and as I bring the second one around to try to get him, uh, again, I, I whip. I'm so emotional after seeing this, sure. this boy turning back that I'm, I'm yeah, a little... Yeah, your eyes are blurry and the, yeah, the, I'm a little the, shaken. the ebb and flow of the, the lights in this area, you just miss. Absolutely. Since Rose, what are you going to do? I see that Kiki is emotional, and I dis use my action to disengage from the creature that is... Or actually, no, I don't disengage because I need to save my action. I go ahead and provoke an op attack and move towards, uh, towards the child. Sure. Uh, he misses. Okay. I then place my hand upon him, unsure of whether he's alive or not, and cast Spare the Dying. You're done. It works. Okay. He's spared. And uh, that, I believe, will be my turn. Yeah. Karina, you're up. <laughs> so, uh, I see that Rose is left, and I'm assuming, uh, because she was talking about Lily and this llama the entire time, that Lillian is still in danger. Um, somewhere in this area with the pumpernickel bread as well. Um, so, I am going to just bum rush this guy into the water. Nice. Okay. So, give, me a, um, give me an athletics check, or strength check. Strength check. You go running across, yeah. Uh, well, let's go ahead and hit that Glossia. Hey, come to my side, baby. Oh, oh, that worked too. Oh, wait, <laughs> hold on, because we can save that. <laughs> what were you going to do? I say, I use my reaction and say, strike true and strike angrily. And as a war caster, or using the God's blessing, I can give you plus 10 to your roll. Nice! So, with that, channel that's with a 19. That, with that, he, he, he's, he's, he seems confused that the, the, the cleric took off running, and he wants to sink his teeth into her goodness. And as he starts to amble towards her, he has no idea that you're coming. And yeah. you, you, you go and you're gonna hit him, and you go to fall, and something, something infuses you with power, and you instead of falling, you double up and poosh, you knock him into the water. Sweet. Um, in my game, and at this time, vampire spawn do not swim, and he drowns to death. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, get this. Uh, so that guy goes in the water, right? Oh no, where my cursor go? I have like two monitors, sorry. Um, so I am going to knock that guy into the water and then we're gonna misty step behind this dude to prep yes. for the next attack to give hey. regrowth advantage on our next attack. Yeah, nice. I love it. Slap because on Karina, because you, um, because you are now attacking the vampire, that's at disadvantage. Um, you will get advantage on your next attack, A, because you're within five feet. Um, so you would've got it anyways. But just so you know, that this vampire is full of light and getting a Cool. Now, 
Regrowth, if she is in that moonlight, is that a problem for her? Does she what take an damage? amazing question. Hold on. <laughs> oh no! And did I mess yeah. up? Oh, no. So when a, when a creature enters the spell area, but the radius is only five feet. So it's easy, oh, yeah. it should be easy for Karina to stay just outside that five foot radius. Karina, mm -hmm. give me a arcana check to make sure that when you misty step, you don't happen to fall into the- I ain't very smart when it comes to the magic stuff. So uh, yeah, oh. I knew it was coming. Yeah, you are, <laughs> you, you are so, you look over and you see this, the, 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 the vampire start to bubble and, and, and release this black, toxic, mm -hmm. undead icon. And I don't even know if I've said anything that made any sense there. But you sort of like look back and you misty step. And because you're like, sort of like, you almost fell in, you almost fell, you misty step out in a, in a wrong way. And you take, how much damage, Kate? Oh, 2d10? Oh, no. Go ahead, roll it, Kate. Oh, oh no. I'm sorry. Okay, oh, no. Oh, 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 can I? Oh, so, question. The transformation, does it? Do Wait, I? never the mind. Moon. I said anything. Never... The moon, because <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of a weird beast thing now. Oh, yeah. Does that yeah. have any adverse effect to me taking yeah. this? Yes. You, you, can feel, you can feel the lycanthropy rise up. Oh no! Make a oh. Save. Oh, 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 yeah. That's not what we wanted, but make a save. As you put it away. Okay. Uh, Fifteen. You make it. Here's the you bummer, the though. Feeling. Here's the bummer, though. There is a whole paragraph on what happens if Moonbeam hits a shape changer. <laughs> you see the lycanthropy come into you, and as you can't control it, you start to shift into a werewolf. Well, there it is, baby. <laughs> We're coming in hot. Blood, lust, and all. Karina, I need you. <laughs> I, in this moment, I'm going to say this. You will now attack and play as a werewolf. I am going to, in the name of this game, give you the ability to every, every round, 10 or higher, you can either choose, 10 or higher, you can make a choice. If you roll below a 10, then you will attack who is one of your, your sisters. No! Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, next up, uh, Regrowth, you are up. Yeah, so I have advantage on my attack. Um, using my bonus action, I speak the magic sword's command word, which is blaze it and it lights up all the way. The, the flames are up to the very tip of it again, like I did in the beginning. And then I make an attack against this vampire with advantage and adding extra damage because of flame touch. So I love it. Drop in. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, that should hit. That's a 19 wow. plus. Double 19. Yeah. That's impressive. Wow. <laughs> it's meant to be. Uh, and, uh, and so, yeah, I got uh, I get the attack. So then, with my regular attack, it's just, uh, it's, uh, just adds 22d6 fire damage. Oh okay, so I think with my sword, it's going to be a d6, 3d6 three, three damage, it sounds like, 3d6, okay, yeah, let's, say, let's just say that. That's how okay, so 10 points of damage, um, and it looks awesome. <laughs> You, 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 um, you hit him. Ah! Joy, you are up. What are you gonna do? Oh, they're up. They're attacking. Monster turn. 2d6. 2d, sorry, 2d10 of moonbeam damage if you don't make my con throw, which is you gotta be at a 14 on a con save. Uh, roll the six. So okay. give me that damage, please. Yum, yum. Um, six points of damage from moonbeam. Okay. Um, so two attacks against you, a six and a 14. 14 hit. Okay, take 12 damage. Okay. Um, the, uh, the other one is um, there against, who's closest, London? Is that, um, you can't attack Kiki. 
So he's going to attack Joy because of the circlet with a natural one. Oh, fails. He falls prone in the combat. He goes back to each up, and there's a step there, and he falls prone. <laughs> advantage on the next round. Joy, you're up. And I'm going to take that opportunity and hit him with a firebolt. Okay. So that's eight. So 12. Miss. Oh, it's, he's prone. Do so you get advantage? All right. Oh, got it. Rude. <laughs> Miss again. <laughs> um, you're right there and it misses. Give me an arcana check. Make sure you don't hit. Um, you don't hit one of your sisters. Going for high. Oh, shit. The funk, man. Um. It bounces between them. They both get <laughs> singed. They're fine. Quick right. question. Is anybody yeah. really low on hit points? Because I got a bonus action and I will mask healing word the F out of you. No, all right. Okay, Not yet. Good Keep, you're up. All right. Uh, with advantage on this prone vampire. Yeah, I'm right just going to three attacks, advantage all three. Here's the first one. The glaive comes down with a 17 plus eight. So I'll hit on that one. Now the butt. Oh, Kiki, before yes. you continue, yes, I need you to make a wisdom check. All right. Uh, I want to. A wisdom. Everyone make a wisdom check. Beat a fifteen. Everybody. I I do not. Okay. Uh, should I even try to? I have a twenty, a dirty twenty. Right. I got a fifteen. So before, as you guys enter. With a 20, I'll give it to you. But Sister Rose, it's a little complicated because you were compromised. But mm. everyone, you have thought of vampire spawn before. You know that there is damage resistance. Yeah. The slashing. So I just want to make sure you know that if you don't have a magic one. No, I do not. And there's nothing else for me to do. So you're just going to take as much as I can possibly give you. <laughs> okay. I just um, want to make sure everyone knows that I, you would have known that because you fought them yeah. out. Of I had no choice. <laughs> so this is all I get. So I'm going to start over if that's okay. Because I threw that one out there, but we'll. I'll just start with my first hit. Oh yeah, great. Okay, great. great. Here we go. First hit. Uh, 16 plus 8. Likely okay. going to hit. Alright, second with the butt. It is a 15 plus 8. Hit. Alright. Third, back with the glaive again. Uh... Eight plus eight, 16. Hits. All right, so all three hits. Nice, uh, do damage. You're gonna take three D10 plus Destroy 15. Next. Oh no, sorry, two D10. Okay. Plus 10, so that's okay. 11, so 21 damage from both of my glaives. Okay. And then one D6 plus five is another nine. So you get 30 total. Nice. So I'm just wailing on him. It's 15. I see him, you know, fixing himself, but I'm just hacking away. Uh, okay, good. You know that these things regenerate, but in this 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 unbelievable cavern of magic, they don't seem to be regenerating as much or as fast. Interesting. Okay. All right. Uh, you're up, Sister Rose. What are you gonna do? Um, I'm going to take off the shield of faith and instead don the Crusader's mantle. I'm enveloped in golden light, and uh, within a 30-foot radius, all of my sisters deal an extra D4 radiant damage when they attack. Nice! Oh, yes. I bless them with my holiness, and then, since I'm a war cleric, using my bonus action, I shall strike down upon this prone vampire. Nice! With the holy advantage. Uh, let's see. Ooh. Nice! Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, wait, this is a bit. Let's yeah. see if we get that crit, girl. Yeah. Ah. Uh, I'll that and then... Happily one. take the 17. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then it's going to be 1d6 plus 2, so that's 4 damage. And then another d4. Where is the d4? There it is, of Radiant. Uh, okay, so that's... Three damage plus what did I roll earlier? <laughs> it's, up the, it's up on the Hello. left. So three, oh. two, four. Yes. That okay. number. And then what's your plus? Uh, I think plus two. Okay. 
Um, uh, Karina, you're up. So, uh, so here's Roll the first D20. D20, yeah. Oh. Mm. Are we sure mm. that, are we, are we sure that Karina doesn't have advantage for some reason or another? There's been a lot of advantage getting thrown around. I think maybe Karina, I think maybe Karina had it. You uh, probably, um, you were probably right until she turned into a werewolf. Um, <laughs> until she a werewolf. can I use my, uh, Glossia come by my side for that reroll. Yeah, what is oh, it? Yes! What is it? What, what happens? Like like as I go to swipe it regrowth with my shadow blade, uh the moths come and like stop really quick. And it made me pause for a second, maybe like, hey, maybe I'm not supposed to be attacking her. So then I reroll again just to make sure in my head what's going on. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! All right, so. Whoa, 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 whoa. Karina, mm -hmm. as you call forth Glacia, mm -hmm. sounds like. Oh! And butterflies, they're moths, descend from everywhere around you. Bless you. I'm allergic to moths. They, they, uh, they envelop the entire area. Thousands of, of, of these moths, these glowing moths, descend from the ceiling. And they swoop down. And they land on all of your... They land on your body, land all over you. And within that moment, not only do they... Do, do you start to see clearly now, as you... As you, as you are in this moment, as they, as they envelop your body, you feel your your Karina self come back and fight against lycanthropy. Mm. Give me a roll. Give me a con. Let's go. Nope. Come Don't on. worry about that. That's a six. Out of advantage. Okay, baby. Yes. Let's go. Oh yes. my gosh. <laughs> and as they, as they envelop your body. You, you you choose not to attack regrowth, but it start you start to eat the moths around you, and you go mad with eating the moths. Nera, he's at disadvantage. Uh, no, he takes his no, he takes his damn oh regrowth. You're up. Sorry, my bad. Excuse me. So I realized I had a reaction. I didn't want to interrupt the flow of everything. Can I take my reaction real quick? Yeah. Okay. Of course, so yes. as soon as I got struck by this vampire's right. nasty bite, bite, I I catch uh, uh, cast Hell hellish rebuke. Nice. Um, so I point my finger, and the creature that damaged me is momentarily surrounded by hellish flames. The creature must make a dexterity saving throw, taking two d10 fire save on a fail. He fails. Excellent. So nice. 11, 11 points of damage. Right. Uh, and I am still concentrating on moonbeams, so there's literally nothing else I can cast. So this this one hand is still pulling moonbeams down from the sky, and my sword hand right. goes stabbing into this vampire one more it's time. It's sort of it, you as as the moths sort of fly in it, like the, they come down, and the moths like they're being attacked by Karina, and they they go they set, they go up to the moon, they go up, they follow the light, and they disappear. Awesome. Um, <laughs> they, he's up. Uh, do your damage. I will. I think I said, I said 3d6 last time, so let's just stick with that. 10 points of, of damage, with, and that's some of that's fire damage. Call it! He drops. Yes. What happens? When when he's, this is this is the final blow? Okay, so yeah, yeah. The, uh, this, this flaming sword goes plunging through this vampire's chest, and he grabs the blade, and he does the, like, the, the scary thing from Lord of the Rings yeah. is he, he pulls me close and he screams into my face and I can smell blood and I can see the meat on his on his teeth and I spit in his mouth and he goes oh. <laughs> he goes down and like he hits the ground. The when the spit in your mouth he, he like kind of like he takes it back he like reels back because it, it, it tastes like I don't know what your spit tastes like but it probably <laughs> tastes horrible to him. And he reels back into this the moonlight shadow and like takes it full blast in his chest and and and, and burns into a puddle of dust. There's one left. He's up. He attacks. Joy. Hits. Take. 
Two hits. Take 24 damage. Oof. You are up, Joy. He, he scrapes across your face and then goes to bite your throat. He misses your throat, but it takes a chunk out of your, out of, what's this thing called, a shoulder? A scallop. Sca and your scallop. He misses it. <laughs> he eats it. Delicious fish. Go ahead, Joy. What are you going to do? So he's right there. He's right there. He's trying to eat you. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to pull out my crossbow, and I'm going to say, make a joyful noise, and I'm going to shoot him with it. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, my goodness. Nice. One day six plus three. She is a melee distance. So it should she, be a disadvantage range. It's a disadvantage. But I'm gonna, You're gonna let it go? A, I'm just gonna it, say pause for that. Yeah. So here's here's what here's what happens. One day six plus three. So seven. Uh D four so, you get. Yeah, yeah. So and the D four from Sister Rose. So as she pulls, as she pulls out, remember that number. As she pulls out, you drop. You've thrown your circlet. You grab your um, your crossbow. You take a step back. He's gonna get an attack of opportunity. You're gonna move out of his threat range. He gets a seven. What? As uh, you have thirteen in your armor class. You have what's your armor class? Uh, twelve. He thirteen. All right. So he hits you. So take six damage. You're able to move out of his threat range and shoot him. You get a crit, so I'll give you the crit, and you double the damage. Does that make sense? Yes. You throw the circlet, you grab your crossbow, you go <laughs> out into um, a distance to shoot him, and he gets to swipe it. But you get double damage, so you do eight plus what? Uh, eight plus three, so Wait, twenty-two. Why? Okay, great. Twenty-two damage. He is still up. Kiki, oh, you're, he is. He is. All right. Stumbling around. He he hurt one of my girls. Uh, that will not stand. So yes, all I have is this glaive. I'm I guess not advantaged anymore. Um. So yeah, he's just gonna take. Two swipes and a butt. Um, I'm gonna roll them all at once here, but we'll go so eight. Oh nice. my god. Those you are high hit all three. All right. Call Kiki, call it. Call it. Are you sure? Okay. Oh yeah, um, there's no, I mean he's like on his last throws. So yeah, so as she, you know, this arrow lands in him as she steps back. Uh, I give her a wide smile, like that's my girl. Uh, and I just take one swipe around, trying to like dislodge his head. I get half of it, so it kind of flops back a little bit. Then the butt pushes it up, so it's all the way, like just the little bits at the back are holding it on, but it's all the way back. And the last slice takes off his head from the back. Uh, it rolls off onto the ground behind him. Ew. I walk over to her, I say, are you okay? I'm great, you avenged me. I was almost dead. <laughs> Honey, I love your attitude. You're so positive. I'm so learning it, so much from you. So <laughs> as we as we pull back, you realize, um, Sister Rose, you hear in your voice, in your head, all of you actually hear in your head, the sound of what seems to be an ancient presence. And he says to you, come, visit me. Visit the great cage. And if we pull back, you'll see what looks to be a, a wall of human flesh that parts. Yeah. As you approach, it's back here, right? There's a human flesh wall right there. And as you approach it, it sort of parts. And as it parts, you can see this flesh is living flesh is secreting liquids, viscous liquids. You move into this next room. There's a there's a picture. Oh. 
So I have a question: Is is the werewolf in me tame, or how's that yeah, how's a, that working out right now? <laughs> great. So in your mind, you hear, "Return to yourself," okay. uh, and it, it, it gives you the ability to to put the lycanthropy at bay. <laughs> um, he, you know, you can feel it, Karina, that it still lives in you. Sister Rose, you know that the psychosis that you were experiencing still lives in you. Is but the for child now, the alive? great cage. So yes, I'd the like to go pick up the alive. child and bring him to Sister Rose. And, and... He, 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 you grab the great cage, you grab the boy, uh -huh. sorry, you grab the boy and you, you move through into the great cage. Oh, I do? So you move through okay. the clutch wall into this room that is illuminated with beautiful white crystals. And as you enter the room, you see standing in the middle of the room, the great cage, what you must assume is the great cage. As you walk into the room, you are immediately greeted with this pulsating energy from the crystals that are around you. Everyone heals to their full power. Yes. So you're, you're back to full health. And as you walk in, you see in the middle this incredible example of this eternal being. It looks like a, a mycanoid. Um, it is a mycanoid, but she is divine. And in at the top of her cap, right, right here, um, can you see? Yeah, right in here, you can see a pulsating gem, boom, hmm. white as the crystals around you. Boom, boom. It emanates awesome power. And she says in your mind, "I am the Great Cage. You have vanquished evil in my domain." For this, I am grateful. And she says, come closer. And you can see around you these, um, these other Mykonoids as they, as they wait and serve as their sovereigns. And there are three berserkers that half of their flesh, there's hum they're human berserkers, and their flesh has been peeled away and replaced by like thousands of tiny mushrooms. It's almost as if the flesh that hangs on the wall is in existence because it's been peeled off of these human forms. Yeah. And she says to you, she says, I am grateful for your work. What can the great cage do for you? And you see, every time she speaks, the gem that, it, that resides right above her on, on this huge dome pulsates with every word she says. It's almost like it patters along with her voice. Can I do an arcana check on the gym? Yes, please do. Please just, just don't, just, okay. That 18? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this gem. Is. Extraordinary. And in your arcana check, you, you can you know that it's 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 imbued with power, and almost as if when she speaks, as that gem flickers with her voice, all the lights in this room, all the crystals in this room, also flash, as if all of the magic in this cavern is associated with this gem. And a hat peers over the side of the cave. <laughs> It's a diamond. I, it's, it's a so diamond. Right now. Yeah. It's so late in New York. They're like, just <laughs> end it. No to to bed. Do so I, she says, what is it you seek? Do I get the sense that there are strings attached here? Um, give me a perception check. I also have to add this, remove that. All right, there we go. Figured it out. Oh, Rasa. There you, it is. Sister Rose, she speaks to you in your mind, separate from everyone else. And she actually reveals her true self to you. 
She actually looks like, you see this little myconoid over here? She actually looks like that. And she says to you, she goes, I reveal my true self to you. This is my true form. Thank you for being here. If it wasn't for you, I don't know what we would have done. You don't know if it's a hallucination or real. Mm -hmm. And she says to you, there are no strings attached. Well, you know, to be frank, my mind hasn't been my own lately. And if I may be so imprudent as to ask you to release whatever. I've been seeing llamas and pumpernickel loaves, and it's only in your clarity that I was freed of this. Uh, would you mind granting me your boon so that I may be forever freed of it? She walks over on her little, her little stump. It's like not two legs. It's sort of like she she's a mushroom, so she sort of paddles <laughs> over to you, and she like her head is like a dome of a, of a mushroom, and she reaches over and she taps you on the knee, <laughs> and <laughs> clarity is yours. She says, if you ever want to go back, I can do that too. It's this gem. I can do all sorts of things. I just give her a little bow. Yeah, she did. She bows back. She's like, oh, oh, oh. Sister Rose. Yes. yes. Oh, Sister Rose. Yeah. What, what did that tiny little mushroom do to you? <laughs> it cured me of my altered state. Do, do you, you see, see, me and the cage have a bit of an understanding. We're kind of friends now. We're pretty cool. She's oh. pretty amazing. And uh, she decided to cure my insanity. How did how did she do that? Uh, she used her spores on me, and she's just I love her. She's just <laughs> such a treasure. Love you, girl. Your she bows. With me. She bows. And so, uh, Sister Rose, you did a spare the dying on this child, right? Yes, but I was not sure if the child was already dead when I cast it. We were in the oh. midst of battle, and I was distracted. Hear me out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> total total sidebar right now because i did the percep i did the arcana check on the gym yeah. obviously that gym has a lot of power and it could probably cure the entire world uh of barovia and possibly get us home with our dads mm. i'm gonna take it <laughs> but that's the great uh, cage I'd it's like a mushroom to, i'd like to help karina in any I, way i can i i wonder so, however but but maybe strawed is actually the problem. I think the jet, I, you know, what, what I remember the, the winery guy saying is that the, the, the stones were missing and that's why it was bad. Things were going bad. So I think this is like a good one. Mm -hmm. And I think we should take down straw and get mm -hmm. the missing mm -hmm. stones. And Did that you not? Well, so hear me out, Kiki. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go with the couple of, um, uh, so wait, hold, hold real quick, Karina. So, you hear in your mind, she says, I hear you. <laughs> if you seek combat, I'd rather you not. I'd rather us not either. Like, I was just planning on using my mage hand, taking that off your head, like, and then we were just going to walk out of here since you can just read my mind all nilly-willy. Uh, the, skin, the skin flaps behind you sort of suck together, and you... Oh, See, wow. so what I was going to say before that happened is that there is way too much human flesh in here for these people to be innocent. I'm just going to say it. Right. All right. This is there's, a very strong point. And, and oh, there's well, some human I flesh mean, there. So there, there's human flesh on the door. Of, you, you know, the little mushroom. To, to she says, she says, Sister Rose, um, the little one says in your mind, do you have the ability to cast the detect evil? I do. I'm here for you. Detect me. Do you, do you want me to do a background check on you, darling? I can do that. Please. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let your friends know. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I can. I can do a check now. I know earlier you asked me, Karina, if I could tell if things were foul or profane, and I couldn't because I was huffing llama juice. But I will check now. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I cast detect good or evil. Yeah, you. This room radiates good. Okay. These are these are good creatures. We so, should not destroy them. Sister, like it, it, oh, it's sort of overwhelming. Sister, like in your mind, you're like, oh, you are. It envelops you as you cast in this land. The twistedness usually is like you are either stung, it, see, like somebody punching you in the brain, or or giving you. A, a gentle rub of the hair, right? And mm. in this room, it's like somebody's like lifting your spirit. I, I point like this, this out to Regra. They say, don't, don't you feel it, Regra? This is the only place in this entire cursed land where our powers haven't been twisted. The weave of magic here is pure. Matthew. I'm, I'm pure Mykonid. Like, I'm very pro Mykonid. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I have, a, I have a healthy caution of them, but they've been a figure in my childhood stories forever. So I'm, yep. I'm a hundred percent. Like, I think I really, I, I believe, I believe that their intentions are good. I do. Yep. You know what? I, I totally think that you guys are right. That they think that these Mykonids are good for the Mykonids. Mm. I use my mage hand to slide of hand that gym. All right. All right. Because as every you, spell is backfired thus far. That's right. As as you okay. Give me give me a um give you me warned a, us, you, see, you said I usually play chaotic characters, but this time so, so, all right, so here's my reasoning behind it really quick, all right? So mind you, every spell has kind of worked, but has had some adverse effect. And mind you uh, Ravenloft is my favorite campaign ever. <laughs> I, I I play it uh, twice a year, every year. Uh, oh. So, yes, yes, so I'm that person. This is my favorite campaign ever. <laughs> so, every spell misfires in some sort of way, so I'm just taking a risk that this is a misfire since it's overwhelming. Oh. Uh, oh. That I did the perception check, the gym is there, there's all these little myconids in this particular room that have human flesh imbued in them in some form or fashion not to mention that we walk through a human flesh door which tells me <laughs> they are killing people to make golems or constructs with human flesh which means that we are not getting out of here without a fight all right so i'm going to do the sleight of hand take the power away from this myconid try not to hurt what's left of these other little creatures because i feel like some kind of way that jim is controlling them if it was stolen from the fields we return it to the fields and that's kind of where i was going with this all right. I'm Good. taking a risk, let's baby. Go. Let's go. As, as you start to conjure, well, Karina, thank you for laying that out. As you, It's at will, by you, the way. It's not even a conjure. It's a cantrip right, yeah. at will. But, yeah, So, but still, it, you, you're still like calling forth magic, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're still casting. So as you start to cast, it, as you feel her presence in your mind, she says to you, child, cannot give you the gem you see before you. You are trying to take what I have found. These creatures that lay before you were stolen from the earth. I did not strip the humans of their flesh. I stripped the corpses of their flesh. So the berserkers that are in front of you are human forms, but they are dead. So they are animated dead. Um, she says, the gem you see in my head was indeed from the winery. Mm. I cannot give it freely, but if you so desire, you can come back and barter with me at some point mm. for now. It is time for you to go before I unleash the power of this gem to show you who is the boss bitch. <laughs> oh, joy has. So, Karina, in this moment, as you see the berserkers in front of you start to arm up, as you see the lights in this room start to dim down, we what is your. Ch and the flesh behind you opens in parts. What are you going to do? Sister was... Rose, the little one in front of you, looks at you and says, now is the time for you to intervene. 
we we should we should we we should not engage in battle. First, this is a battle we could not hope to win. Uh, second, I, I think this is a gem. Great Cage, if if we complete our quest and purge this land of, of the most vile and profane of vampires, mayhaps even Strahd himself, will you help us in our cause of getting the gem back? The little one in front of you paddles her feet and says yes. All you have to do is ask nicely. I'm willing to barter, but for me to kill half of my mushroom friends, I cannot do that. You must understand. I, I, I'm not trying to be rude, but you cannot take the gem. Of course, of course, Great Cage. Uh, she says that she can't simply give us the gem for it would kill half of her mushroom friends. But if we were to come back and ask her nicely. Which half? Oh. oh. And with that, the room goes black. Oh, we really should, we really should not fight. The entire that. room goes black. Oh, and man. in this moment, you feel the earth beneath you start to shake and crumble. Oh, that's, that's so And you are dropped down into a pit of darkness. All right. And that is where we'll end tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I have to say, Thank you so much from where I was at the beginning of this game to where I am now. I feel like <laughs> different places. I'm so scared and so nervous. And it just goes to show you, no matter where you're at in your DM life, no matter how you game, the, the sitting in a circle and telling stories with friends is like one of the best things to do. So I want to humbly and gratefully say thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to take you on this adventure for the last 19 hours. Yay! <laughs> thank, you. thank you, that thank was a blast. You. Yes. That was wonderful. I want to thank um, Vorpal Court, who did an amazing job. The software is incredible. It's the second time I played on it. It's in the world that we're living in. It's just a way for us all to come together in a deeper, more profound connection. Um, the ability to point on the screen to say where you're going is, is just, it's beautiful. I want to say thank you to everyone from Dwarven Forge. These two builds <laughs> are remarkable. And if you, Nate has the, the heart of a giant and I just love them and I love everyone there and their ability to say yes and, and they're like, what about this? And they, and, and I sort of dreamed and this is what they came back with and they're brilliant. So cool. And, awesome. and Ben in, at Sirenscape, your ability to sort of flow with us and tell the story through music is so enveloping and beautiful and uh, it's one of the tools that I have found with Bino and Grimm's. We've included them. We were lucky enough to include them in our box for Avernus. And I tried the system and I use it now all the time with my games. And I think it's immersive and I love it. <laughs> um, you guys, please uh, just give me a second and go around the circle and talk about who, where we can find you, where we can find you in social. And, um, and yeah. Hi, I'm Deborah Ann Wool. I, I, you can find me at my name at all the different places, I think. Um, um, this is what I have going on. This is very fun and exciting. Um, I play a lot of D&D and sometimes I do some acting. Uh, and that's me. Great. <laughs> Hi, Kate. Uh, my name is Kate Welch. Uh, I'm a game designer. You can find me on Instagram at Kate Welch, cha cha with four H's. And I also stream sometimes if you want to come watch me play video games badly. <laughs> Nice, I love that. Uh, who wants to go next, Karina or Ember? Oh yeah, uh, I am Ember Moon. You can find me at WWE Ember Moon on Twitter, WWE underscore Ember Moon on Twitter because some jerk took the username. Uh, you can see me Wednesday nights on USA for WWE NXT. And you can find me in Bronze's chat almost every day this way, <laughs> right here. <laughs> Bronze? Wow, that was an amazing Run introduction cool. and a, a glowing, <laughs> a glowing recommendation because I love Ember. Um, I'm Jasmine, <laughs> that bronze girl, Bular. You can find me at that bronze girl on Twitch where I stream a lot. You can also find me on Twitter at the same handle. Um, yeah, I, I DM. I'm a player. I play a lot of different systems and I'd love to get to know you, maybe, as long as you're not a dick. Yeah. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Christina Ariel. K R Y S T I N A A R I E L L E. Spell it right, or you'll get the wrong person. And uh, you can find me on Mondays on Improvised Champions with Mark Mir on CNE Games. 
And you can also find me in Rise of the Veiled Alliance. It's our Dark Sun game that also airs on Mondays on LFM underscore network. You can find me on Dimension 20 playing Wabarella Sasparilla Ganglin on Wednesdays. And you can also find me on Sundays on Into the Motherlands playing Captain Sila 919. I do a lot of stuff and things, but if you want to keep up with it, I'll probably tell you about it on Twitter. So just be there. Uh, awesome. Thank you guys. Uh, my name is Matthew Lord. I want to do us right by our sponsors. I coming in, I was so nervous. I couldn't even read the copy. So, um, thank you all again to our sponsors. If you go to, um, lost odysseyevents.com, you'll see that our game supports, uh, extra life. Extra life is an incredible gaming charity, um, that supports local charities and, and, and local everyone across the country and around, the, I think around the world um donate and so if you go in the next 24 hours eldritch foundry which has been amazing for us um they'll give you 30 percent off on a custom mini you can also get a free wolf or flail of the founder mini and 100 percent of those proceeds go to extra life we want to thank core games um you go to core.com uh, coregames.com to join free games at platform for gamers and game creators um deborah has the lost odyssey game releasing on that platform this week. So um, if you want to go check that out, that game is going to release there. And um, Neverwinter, Realmsmith, Eldritch Foundry, um, all of you have been such incredible sponsors of this event. Um, if you want to get the Curse of Strahd box, what, what have I done wrong? What am I doing? No, wrong? You're, you're, crushing you're, crushing you're, 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 you're doing, you're doing, you're you're doing such a great yeah. job. You're so proud of I feel like I feel like I just like you can see no. me negative. No, 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 no. You keep um, going, sweetie. You are killing it right now. Oh my god, why are you laughing at me? Okay. Uh Curse of Strahd is now available. Uh Wizards has just released their box edition of Curse of Strahd, and I have to, I'd be a fool if I didn't say it. My name is Matthew Lillard. I'm on a show called Good Girls on NBC. We start shooting on Monday, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. I am also um a uh, founder of a company called Beetle and Grimm's. Our company makes boxed editions, and I have never DM before. And then we uh, were, were tasked with the idea of launching the legendary edition of Curse of Strahd. And I, because I was the sort of um, key designer on that box, uh, it's a team effort, but I was leading the charge. I got to DM Curse of Strahd for all my fellow uh, Beetle and Grimmers because we had never played it. So it's been a real honor. Awesome. Again, I want to say this. Powerful women playing a game as powerful yeah. women. Yeah. And on behalf of my daughters and all the daughters out there that will see this game, um, I thank you for your time. I thank you for your heroic, heroic, heroics, hero, heroicism. That's I think, word. yeah, that's, that's heroism. Heroism. Yeah. Heroism. Heroism. Yeah. heroism. Heroism. Uh, I've it's said really so, many words, so many words and so fast. Um, so thank you very much. And that's it for us. And um, I hope you guys had fun. Very good. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks so much. You did great. Bye Thank you, guys. Amazing. Thank you, everyone. And by the way, three, two, one. Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> Thank you, guys.
Become inspired by Sirenscape Online Player's massive sound library and weave your tabletop legends by building custom sound sets that bring your immersive world to life. Simply download the app to access the entire Sirenscape archive anytime you need epic sounds. The online player works perfectly alongside any virtual tabletop to bring your players together no matter where they are in the world. Broadcast your custom sound sets in real time with flawless audio quality to give them a game they'll never forget. Get the Sirenscape online player today at Siren. What does your wandering eye see? Can I touch it? I'm gonna take this miniature and I'm gonna spray it with a matte varnish. Things that you've done in your career. Lucasfilm, Uncanny X-Men, X-Men Gold. Basically a column <laughs> of smoke where your wagon used to be. <laughs> 